Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm Jordan. Okay, so we are talking about Squid Game. If you want to go to that, we have like the chapter markers. This is a podcast. It's about feelings. It's about other things also. We do talk about our feelings. We do talk about some life experiences. We talk about some other stuff before we get into it. But if you are just interested in the topic, uh, it's a longer episode. So you can, you know, head on over there. Thanks for being here. Hey, real quick. Lighting is different. I know. It's because we, it's episode 100 uh, of Sad Boys. And we, we didn't plan this, but we had a very, you know, uh, you know, feelings and other things also a conversation for the first hour and a half of this episode. And then for the back hour and a half is the Squid Game Zone. And so it's an extra beefy sad boys for you to celebrate 100 episodes of the podcast. Thank you for it. Thank you to Jacob. Thank you to the whole team. It's, it's actually insane that we have four more this. years and all that. Okay. Anyway, back to the show. <laughs> No tape, baby. Oh, whoa. Are no those from tape. the place from our secret spot? Yes, sir. They look great. Six pairs. I did. One they arrived. Oh, were... yeah. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> they, said, they told me it had arrived. And then I called back and they were like, oh, at your house? No, mm. no, 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 no. Dang. We couldn't. We didn't. I j took it back. Did Sorry. they go to the post office? They don't know. <laughs> what? They, they're going to follow up and try shipping okay. it again. There's like, oh, this. You wanted to wear the glasses. Yeah, you wanted to have them. Uh oh, bloody no! Nope. Cool. Scatterbrain over here. I mean, I, going, I had a thing where um, my address wasn't registered with the post office, mm -hmm. and so I wasn't allowed to receive mail. The mailman, like, he came to me and he said, "Hey, is this you?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "I'm like, I reach for the mail." He goes, "No, oh. I can't give it to you." Nice try. I'm not allowed. Is this you? Answer my riddles three. Yeah. And then he goes, I'm not allowed. Uh, you've got to like do some shit with the post office. And I was like, I do. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and so then they were like holding all my mail for a while. Hostage, I think. But it's mine. But it was mine. I was literally, there was a, a box of like tr uh, the treat training treats that I use for Dipper that was just held hostage at the post office for like two months. I mean, I, I still get stuff shipped to you now. Yeah, yeah. It sucks so much. Yeah. I'm, and, I think mm. I'm re-upping my lease, and I think a part of it is going to be a stipulation of like, brother, you're a great super. I love this place. Everything works. Every single person that lives in this complex of like 20, they're each individual houses, but what, there's like 20 of them. Yeah. They have three different types of address. And all of the numbers are the same. It's yeah. all two, 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 wangle, two, 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 dangle. And it like, yeah. people turn up at the identical long out exterior and like, which of the 50 gates do I use? Right. What is the code? It's mildly different for each. And then like, when I'm inside, which side is it on? It's security through obscurity, but what you were securing yourself from is mail. <laughs> it's the things I bought with money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, my Tide Pods that I need soon. Yeah, you're secure from receiving things and having friends know how to get to your house. <laughs> Do you remember my old spot? Oh, wait, actually, you hadn't moved down when I was like, for the most of the time I was in my old LA spot. But I do remember the... Um, it wasn't Koreatown. It, it was yeah. It was uh, Pico Union. Was Pico Union. Yeah. yeah, I uh, I do remember that place because there's a, a video that I recorded in it. Of course, yeah. You crashed yeah. me before the move down, and yeah, we did yeah. the Patreon prep right after I moved down. Oh man, I remember we made the little um, presentation. For those who don't know, Jordan and I uh, not only did we used to work at Patreon, but Patreon has a yearly convention of sorts and it's changed over the years they actually recently just had it in la oh and we were invited to attend but both of us were out of town um so that would have been a that would have been like a a, a return a fateful return so maybe next year but anyway well, we hosted, maybe when they can afford us yeah pal, you know? we hosted a patreon convention once it was like hosted by they included sad boys in the billing mm -hmm. so if you google like Patricon 2019 or something like that, you can find photos of uh, me and Jordan on stage looking like we don't know what we're doing, but we were we were surviving. Which, you know, on reflection, maybe we didn't and might not still know completely. True. 
I do think there's it's weird now being in the future and just having the hours on mic, not just mm-hmm. for this show, yeah, but the I like now no adrenaline goes on after we hit record. There's no oh like, yeah, no that like whew, yeah. I got up recently to do a speech at an event that was not entertainment focused, but yeah. I got up to you know the off the top kind of you know clank the glass whatever. Right. It's been a while since I did like just in person public speaking. Yeah. And I was ready to be a little shaky. And I got up and like, it's just the podcast. It's whatever. I, yeah. At this point, I can't do much. I am dumb as a brick, but this is like it's yeah. it, it comes second nature. Yeah. The um we've definitely got some hours in doing something. Oh, and thank you for everybody that listened and posted the Spotify wrapped. Speaking yeah. of hours. Speaking so, of inconceivably large numbers of hours. Yeah, we are recording this on the day that Spotify wrapped dropped. And there are a lot of, so by the way, we're on Spotify. If people didn't know, uh, it is a pretty convenient place to listen to the podcast. Um, and the video versions of the podcast are there. So if that's, if that interests you, then, you know, go for it. Lots of people have sad boys in their Spotify rap. We got a lot of people who it's their top podcast. A lot of people listening for more time than we've released (laughs) podcast more times than we've recorded met about edited. yeah uh which is cool by i would i mean i guess i should I, there's no rap for uh you know youtube as a consumer of youtube yeah but i would be really curious what my hours are on kind of my casual background listens but mm. i don't have a show channel anything that would eclipse i don't know a thousand minute. I, oh, like I watch no so much YouTube. I think I I don't have maybe not a single thing, like no a single, single channel. It's yeah. the only entertainment I like. I just justified. I just put Katie on my YouTube uh, premium Hell family plan yeah. because I'm like I know there's a mental barrier to get there. Mm-hmm. But when I look at my little YouTube premium stats and I just see like two hundred thousand background play hours. It tells you that? Uh, yeah, if you go in the premium section, it just Hold tells on. you a break. Wait, live. I'm, I'm going to do this. And I believe it's all time. Oh, this is about to be very wild. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, we here we go. Here we go. Yeah, do you have any guesses for me? So it, so it goes ad free videos, and then it says a number of hours, mm. and then background play and a number of hours. I've been a YouTube premium member since October 2020, but it's worth noting that I have had YouTube premium since the beginning because I had Google Music yes. beta mm. in 2014. So I, I still pay $7.99 for YouTube Music and YouTube premium because uh-huh. I've been grandfathered in or whatever. And it says like under your name, right? Member since all the way back then. Uh, it do- it doesn't say it here because they've changed what it means, but premium member since October 23rd, 2020. But so so it's only counting since October 2020. Because mine, for whatever reason, has maybe... Oh, it's because I upgraded, I guess, for the family plan to add Katie to mm-hmm. it. But mine is only from uh, October 29th of this year. Oh. So my numbers are oh. a lot lower now. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's, yeah, um, I don't know. 2,000 hours. 2,000 hours, which would be 2,000 divided by 24 is basically 100 days, right? Uh, that would be like... That'd be 83.3 days. 83.3 days of just straight listening, right? Okay, so, and then there's background play. Mm. So there's how many ad-free videos you've watched and then how many videos you listen to in the background. Ad-free videos, I have listened to 6,570 hours. <laughs> Good. How many how many days is that? Divided by twenty four? Six thousand how many? Six thousand five hundred and seventy is two hundred and seventy three days. So of, of so min- that it, all minutes. of the last three years, one third of that has been watching <laughs> YouTube videos. Uh in some capacity. And then background play is sixteen hundred fifty hours. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. I mean mine is boned now I, mean, I wish i'd taken a screenshot on my old one because now it is in the last month and a half or whatever uh just it's like 110 hours on ad free videos and well whatever, but like 
the reason this is actually super relevant is because every time Spotify wrapped comes around, okay, the past couple years, probably since I got YouTube premium, uh, this is not an ad for YouTube premium, by the way. No, it's not it's just, uh, it just, I like knowing the numbers and this is embarrassing, and, but. And we can also uh, justify the expense as a professional expense. Oh, absolutely. If we record something on stream and you just do something on gold or on my channel, yeah. we don't want to do ads for other people while we are watching something. Yeah, again, I am also grandfathered into an $8 a month plan. So I have been incentivized to not let that go <laughs> for, for, I think you get a lot of value. You know, it's like you get a Spotify competitor in YouTube music, which it's not as good as Spotify, but it's something. And then- um, I'd say, you know, it's not an ad by the way. I had zero seconds of Spotify, of uh, uh, YouTube music. Yeah, oh, like three, oh yeah, my paid. YouTube music was three, <laughs> less than three hours or something like that. And you know why there's uh, there's even three hours is because uh, when YouTube Music Beta came out, the entire it was a time when iTunes was still around. Mm. And iTunes, for those who don't know, is a place where you would store your music library, the files. So, uh, which is it's like a, it's like if you downloaded music, if you downloaded the music and you had the individual little MP3 Under files, like a computer. Yeah, and so what you would do is you would take CDs. And you would buy you'd buy a CD, you'd buy the Killers Hot Fuss, right? Of course. And you'd put it into your CD player, and then you'd put it you'd open up iTunes, or you'd put it into your computer. You'd open up iTunes. iTunes would scan the Grace the Grace Note Music Library <laughs> to to tell you uh, to recognize. Oh, these are the Killers. This is the Killers album, and here's the names of all the songs. And then you can. Uh, import it and then it would scan that import all the songs into your library and then you would have those little files sitting in your iTunes library and then you would like have to plug in physically your uh, iPod and it would like sink sink in now it, for those confused that is some of the letters of iPhone and yeah. I can see it kind of sinking in for it's a second close, yeah. but an iPod is it, it's basically a device for music but only prepared in advance so imagine like an meal. iphone without the phone mm -hmm. without uh, most of the it, stuff and then that was the ipod touch and then before that it was uh it had a little it had a little click wheel and it was basically just menus mm -hmm. through your folders of music so and, then, and on like the screen and that was a, revolutionary when it came yeah, out on a screen that is like was, it was eclipsed by the game boy advance yeah <laughs> it actually was maybe one of the higher dpi it actually uh because i had the i the first i got an ipod video in middle school for like christmas and um it was maybe the highest dpi screen i had ever seen at that point point. and i had pirated no i didn't pirate it i uh it was never I synced my iPod with Russell, my friend Russell's uh, iTunes, and I got uh, all these episodes of The Office. And I did pirate stuff as well. Uh, Statute of Limitations is out, baby. Um, I would never. So. And so I would watch The Office uh, before it was on Netflix, before it became passe or whatever to like The Office. It was still airing at the time. I'm old. And uh, I would line. Yeah, the Office, which is a show that was on yeah. television, which is like a box that is kind of like a computer, which is what your phone is now. Um, so anyway, uh, we got away from the plot here, which is uh, on your iPod, on my iPhone. Why did I say iPhone? We oh, heard you talk about the YouTube iPod music video. Beta. Oh, so yes, the reason right. the, or the reason that I was using the Google Music beta is because they pitched themselves as the cloud iTunes. Mm -hmm. So you could upload all of your music to the cloud. Nowadays, that sounds like a. Um, honeypot for uh, finding pirates and like <laughs> yeah. prosecuting them. But um, <laughs> but it was like upload, it was very much in the beginning of the cloud solving all problems. Oh, just put it in the cloud. And uh, the cloud is just computers that someone else owns. <laughs> um, there are no clouds involved. Made out of magic. Um, you'd upload your music to like Google servers and then you'd be able to stream it anywhere. So you didn't need to lug around your gigabytes, which was big at the time of music library. And the reason that I did this was because to this day, there are like, I used to collect rare MP3s. I used to collect like live, like performance oh, yeah. recordings, rare B-sides, unreleased songs. And uh, those would go in my iTunes library Hidden and then there'd tracks. be no way to stream those or mixtapes off of like Datpiff that you couldn't, that weren't on streaming websites. So that still is a problem to this day. And uh, which showing your friends when you are the one that cracked the code, that feels like national treasure. 
Like it, the Da Vinci Code of getting access to like a hidden track and on I a everything. Gorillaz album. And so, and and then the the thing is, all of this. I'm I'm pretty sure that all of this feature is gone now. Like it's been gone for many years, but your uploaded music, YouTube still has to keep it around because otherwise they're deleting people's like history of their lives. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, good point. So over time, they started replacing songs that they could recognize with like higher bitrate quality, mm. so they could only keep one one um, copy of it on their servers, for example. But the stuff that they didn't have, they couldn't replace. So to this day, I that's where uh, my old podcast when I was fourteen is the still random uploaded. Podcast. The random podcast. It's on. It was on my iTunes, which was on my Google Music, which is now on my YouTube Music. Nice. Um, and then like you know, old random songs and stuff are still on my uploads. Like there's an uploads section on YouTube Music that you know, and I never open this app. But if you go to my library, okay. Hi, Jarvis. What are you doing here? Yeah, there's the random podcast. But yeah, I'm on. Uh, you can go to uploads. Can and you see like, the logo for the random podcast? Yeah, it's a uh, it's an upside down R because we're so random. Sure, and then it's insane. a peep. It looks like the Playboy Bunny is the main uh feedback we got. Oh, that's twisted. But even like this, like this Drake album art here, or not that's you know, some other stuff. That Drake album art is a fan made mixtape pre so far gone coming out in two thousand nine. Or like these are like rips of like I made a playlist of Utada Hikaru songs called Utada Singles I Don't Know as well so that I could learn them better. <laughs> oh, you have a workflow. Yeah. These are my on-the-go playlists from iTunes. So like on-the-go, oh God, yeah. iTunes would like make these playlists or you could make these playlists like, like I'm about to leave the house. I'm going to make a playlist on the go or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were basically like, oh, I'm about to, uh, this is what I'm, this is my list of things I want to listen to. And I still have 52, at least, on-the-go playlists that I had at the time. This one is on-the-go 52. It's three Jonathan Colton songs. Um, on-the-go. It's a pretty short on-the-go. Yeah. It's on-the-go to my bedroom. On-the-go 23. The episode uh, 254 of Dyson Shoe X, the Dragon Ball uh, podcast, which has now become uh, Kanzen Shoe X. And it's still running, by the way. Shout out to them. Shout out to Mike Labrie. Vegito EX. And the Muggle cast. And the Muggle cast, also still going. Uh, shout out to um, Andrew, but what is his, uh, his, his, he's got a great name. Um, Jordan. I'm Andrew Sims. Wow. And his like Twitter at is Sims. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Muggle cast back in the day. Um, Yo, shout out to the comedy button. Shout out to me uh, drawing down ideas for an Arctic Monkeys music videos while I was on the bus. Shout, shout out to me not getting laid. <laughs> shout <laughs> out to the band Hey Monday, headed up by Cassidy Pope, who would later win the voice and become a country pop singer. Um, but <laughs> okay, when, she yeah, was wow. in, when she was in the pop punk days, I was fucking with Hey Monday hella. Um, all right, well, that's enough of... Uh, Oh, uh, you gotta have logic bangers a playlist oh by God. me. This will never. Well, oh jeez. Oh, oh. Uh, how about this playlist? Code to this, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's it starts oh, with it's a Wayne my my, uh, my code to this playlist is six foot seven foot by Lil Wayne. Confessions Part Two. Insane Shift by Usher. So appalled by Kanye West. Sleazy by Kesha. Grenade by Bruno Mars. What is this playlist, dude? Katy Perry, one of the boys. Uh, that's a that's a sick song. Shout out Katy Perry. Um, but anyway, yeah. So all of this is to say, these days I'm not listening to music very much, sure. and it makes me feel like a weirdo. I, it definitely feels like I have less appreciation now that not just in a well, look how accessible everything else is now, but more in an option paralysis thing. Where mm -hmm. I like, I guarantee I'm checking my Spotify Wrapped thing. Maybe we'll might check it out on the Patreon. Well, listen, my Spotify Wrapped. I'll tell you, it's embarrassing. And I'm open to sharing it with our patrons on patreon.com slash sad boys. That's where I'll leak it. The like YouTube premium, you're not obliged to check it out. We uh, will It's always just entertainment plenty of, plenty for money. Stuff. There's the, this, this show's free. I guarantee whatever my Spotify wrapped is this year is almost identical to last year because I have my downloaded albums. I have my original soundtracks and stuff that I specifically listen to if I kind of want to learn 
production a little bit. Like I want to try and listen for like little nuances and see if I can recreate them in something. But if I am for just entertainment and hanging out, it is the same playlist as it has been for four years. Every now and then I'll hear something new, add it to the slaps playlist. Ooh. And I will just, <laughs> I'll turn it on while I'm home. I'll stick it on the Alexa and then all of a sudden like a like strange, like a health noise rock track comes on mm. and the Alexa can't handle it. Like this, this, it just sounds wrong. I'm like, sorry, Ethan. Yeah. I screwed up the vibe. I screwed, oh, so, so sorry about the vibe. Everyone hates me. My apologies the about vibe. the vibe. How you doing, dude? What the fuck is up? I'm doing. Sorry, that was really aggressive. Well, hey. You, sorry, I'll try again. Try how, it again. How you doing, you bastard rat? Oh, okay. Sorry. No, that's nice and inviting. <laughs> it's cute. I, I'm doing good. I'm I, I'm glad you asked me because I was like, I definitely want to talk about how we're doing today. And sometimes we don't. But one thing is that for uh, med update, first of all, I got my uh, I got my medicine. Finally, they I said got it my, couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be done. Vyvanse went generic. And then there was a, a bull run towards the the every pharmacy in America. To the get hype beasts were the up front. Liz Dextramphetamine or whatever the fuck it is. And uh, I couldn't get it for a while. We called all the pharmacies around, eventually found it. I was able to get a prescription at the pharmacy. And uh, so I got it. So so the did you go to like a little saved, pharmacy far away or something? Like not that far away, okay. but but yeah, it was like not the normal one. It very much feels like I'm hitting the snooze button for 30 days mm -hmm. until like the mad dash of next month comes. <laughs> but there's that. I also um, I had a uh, like when I got my um, when I got my deviated septum surgery, I stopped taking unintentionally actually stop taking my um like an like a anxiety medication like that also helps with depression it's like kind of just supposed to help with everything and i was in bed for the better part of a week like not really moving or doing anything and i didn't i was just sleeping and i wasn't thinking about medication or routine or all of my routine was kind of shot and you know, especially with ADHD, but not even to prescribe anybody, it, the lack of routine can really disrupt your everything. And it, for me, the lack of routine disrupts my everything. So I forgot to take this medication. Then like weeks went by, I realized I forgot to take it, but then I was scared to pick it back up because I wasn't sure. Because yeah. with these medications, I like feel like before I talk, before anything happens, I need to talk to my psychiatrist, make sure it's okay. Often um, there's a ramp up process. Exactly. And because I needed to send that email, that's another executive function thing mm -hmm. on the plate where I'm like, I need to do this. And then I need my anti-anxiety medication so I can send this email to get it. Exactly. And I didn't do it. And then more time went by. And then, wait, the, you don't have Vivance at this point? Is this crossing this is over all with that? Well, yeah, uh, I, I have it. I've been making do without being able to fill the prescription. Fortunately, I like was able to stretch out some stuff. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, the email didn't get sent. And until this past week, I finally sent it uh, because I was like, at a certain point I was like, oh, well, let's just see how I do without it. I should be fine. But I've found myself, first I found myself really sad around TwitchCon. I think I talked about it. It was a very dark time for me. I now think that was maybe withdrawals from mm, like oh, the yeah. medication. And then, um, Recently, I've been finding my mood being way more spiky. And that is something that the medication is supposed to help with. So it's like- I'll Is it a stabilizer specifically? It's not. I actually do not know what type of medication it's classified as. Let me let Google it. I mean, success is always basically the same. Used to treat major depressive disorder. Its effectiveness is viewed similar to that of other antidepressants. All right, so let's go with that. I wasn't sure if it was an SSRI, uh, so I didn't want to say it without knowing, but Antidepressive for people who are- Yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's like a serotonin, serotonin yeah. uptake inhibitor or something. Yeah, so recently I was like, I've been having a few extremely spiky days where the wrong thing hits me at the wrong time and my mood is completely shot and I am outside of myself knowing that it's like not reasonable that mm -hmm. it's happening, but I'm like not able to do anything about it. I go, oh, 
oh God, this is awful. And I feel so bad. Oh man, I wish I didn't feel like, you know how people yep. are like, oh, just don't, depression's not real. Just don't feel the feelings or whatever. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like people who say that, like you're wrong. You know, you can, like I can in intellectualize all of it and know exactly what to do in the right moment and still not be able to. Sure. Like, you know, yeah, the only yeah. thing we can be capable of is how we displace that. Yeah. Like if we then get aggressive with other people, then that's like, that's where we're culpable. Oh, yeah, and it's like you're culpable for your actions, but thankfully nothing in, impacted other people to my knowledge. I don't think, um, I think maybe I was a little bit more short with people when like things would go wrong or maybe I was less, normally I'm very like, make sure everybody's doing good. Maybe I was like a little bit more terse and things like that. Um, but I, uh, people in my life, let me know. I, I think it's more, I just go internal mm -hmm. with that stuff and I, um, now that I've identified what is probably the problem, I did get that email shot off. Uh, my psych was like, actually you do, you should ramp back up. So started a lower dose. So we got me prescribed a lower dose again and we're gonna work our way back up. So I'll see you in 90 days or whatever, however long it takes to like rebalance everything. But I feel on the right track again there. And now I feel a bit more like uh it's it was for sure doing something yeah because one of the things about medication is that for me i i can't always tell if i'm experiencing anything different it's like really good good cosmetic surgery yeah if you can't notice that's good that's the working one it, and people are like yeah plastic surgery never works it's like well only because you know the bad ones yeah there i can always tell <laughs> type b or whatever and it's like hey man no you if especially passive and like ambient medication that's just supposed to make you feel all right. Yeah. That is not responsible for making you happy. It's just responsible for letting you become happy. I almost Ooh. said, I've had plastic surgery. Can you guess where? But then realized that that would invite so much conversation and uh, input about my body that I don't mm. want. But Do you want to cut that? No, Even? no, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll say it. I had a, a gynecomastia surgery uh, in 2016 because I had like hard tissue under my uh, breasts that like I like lost a bunch of weight and I was like feeling really good about my body, but I had this like hard tissue. And so it like, like I didn't feel comfortable in my body. I didn't feel like it didn't feel, I didn't feel right. It's, it's not, it's not something you fix with exercise. It's like, it, it's not something it, you yeah. fix with like, it's unfortunately you can't fix it with exercise. Uh, it's like usually happens uh, with guys like hormonally, like when they're like around puberty time. And uh, there's no real health risks, but it is a medical thing. So it's funny because I, I had to pay for it out of pocket. It's like the first big like thing I did with uh, my money as a young, like fresh out of college, like finally like making adult purchases type thing. Yeah, we knew each other. We time, knew so each other. I yeah. it was like the the basically the winter the winter after I started Patreon. So mm -hmm. it'll be about let's see uh 17 18 19 20 21 22 23. So it'll be about 7 years since I had that and every single day I've thought about it and been happy I yeah, did it. Right it's sure. very much gender affirming care. It's very much like I feel like so much more comfortable in my body and my body makes sense to me. It's like it's like weird having like a little like giant like it was like the size of a golf ball like um like thing under my chest. Sure. And it was crazy. And like um and it's a thing I never talk about. Uh it's a thing no one notices. No one cares. Uh I've told people and then they go, "Oh, I never would have." And I'm like, "Yeah, well, um, it's kind of the thing. It, it's not. It's reaffirming for you. It's reaffirming That's for me. What it's affirming. Nobody. I, I have had a history of like body image issues, and this was something that like helped me so much that I could never tell someone what to do with their body. Oh. And like, and it, it just like, but like for me, it was like every day I used to do this. I used to like pull my shirt up because I was like, it's like folding into my like stuff and I like don't want, like it makes me aware of my physical form. And like, I just like don't want to think about my body. Sure. I want my body to like be a sort of aspect of me that I like take care of and I like live in and I honor. But at the same time, I don't want to like think about the way I exist externally in the world. 
And that was something that like helped me with that a lot. Um, Especially if you're like, the explanations you're getting for what you should look like are, pr I mean, at least for me, maybe this is also like not growing up with a primary male figure in this, you know, mm -hmm. where, where we grew up. Like I, my only rule set for what was like aesthetically masculine was movies and TV and very early on was wrestling, which is like not a good reference point to have, especially when like, you, you know, not like, I'm like a white guy, you know, you know, I'm built a certain way, maybe. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, shout outs to people that have even even more complicated scenarios to try and figure out. For yeah, themselves, but. definitely. Um, but I will say, just because I feel like people hearing this might find help in it, uh, just knowing that someone that they like are aware of has gone through this, uh, and you you witnessed this. Uh, I had to wear like a compression vest for like six months or something That's like right. that, like. Um, where, and it was like I had different ones and I would try to like hide it under my clothes. But I was never that concerned about it because it was like, I was like, I finally felt like myself um, under, like it was like my external and like my external self reflected my internal self. And I think also that's like, I'm all for um, accepting your body as you are. I think it's a, it's another thing. Oh, another thing I'll say is like, I jokingly say plastic surgery, but like some people wouldn't consider it plastic surgery because it is like, um, it is it is elective surgery uh, and it's non, uh, what's the word? It's like a, it's a, it's a condition that isn't harmful sure, to, yeah, to have. So, so insurance doesn't cover it. So you have to like pay for it out of pocket. I, so. Yeah, I know there's a lot of dicey words in there. I, I suppose there's no debilitating element to yeah, it. Yeah, but there's like a term that they use, but right. I, I can't think of it. But anyway- Like uh, a prosthesis or a burn solution or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, this is something that's like a, you don't, you're at no risk if you have this condition. Uh, and so for insurance, they're like, well, your life is not at risk, so we're not going to cover it or your health is not at risk. There's a pretty good parallel between what you were saying about meds. Honestly, it's yeah. a sure you could live the rest of your life, not addressing this thing, but it is a, I mean, we both had it with our teeth at one mm -hmm. point, right? Yeah. Where I was going to mention that. You want to live sure. It doesn't seem to be getting in the way. It doesn't seem to be like preventing making friends or like, uh, feeling attractive in other ways. But I like, I, I smile pretty big and I laugh pretty big. Yeah, yeah. And I can't do small chuckles. You know what I mean? Like something really gets me. I'm like crying. I'm like yeah, 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 wide yeah. open. Crawling on the floor. Crawling on the floor, dying. <laughs> Duh, uh, dying like a phoenix, laughing with tears in my eyes and then rising stronger than ever. <laughs> no blood disease actually. And I, it is, I hated the feeling of, 10% of my brain being like, stop laughing, you teeth look stupid. Yep. It's like, ah, well that, we, we were in a photo booth last night mm -hmm. and when we were taking it, we were like so happy. And I, at one point I was just like, I went like, no, ah, and yeah. I opened my mouth wide. And that's like nice in the same way that, yeah, there are a lot of conscious decisions and lifestyle techniques you can use to feel better if you are an anxious person or a depressive person or uh, a, I, get, I can only project for ADHD and bipolar too, but in both of those cases, sure. But also you're kind of putting, you, you're giving yourself a ceiling if you're always going to have that anxiety and you're fighting it. Yeah. You're using half your brain to wake up every day and go like, all right, one of my procedures, uh, I'm self-conscious about this issue. And right. If you never do meds, you don't, not that everyone should, but if you never take, um, never try every path, then you could spend your whole life blaming yourself for something that you really weren't responsible for. Right. If you didn't educate yourself on like medically why you, uh, I forget the term, what was it? That you had like the, the tissue. Oh, the gynecomastia thing? If you didn't look into that and understand what it was, you could have spent your life blaming yourself for not working out right or, yeah, right yeah. or something. Well, these are things that like, everyone's gonna process this stuff differently and so whatever you want to do, uh, you know, it's it's your body. And um, I mean, yeah, you could have this thing and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you don't if you don't care, then it doesn't matter. There's no like moral like value to one way or the other. Uh, but uh, one thing I will say, because like I am in no way like I just want people to feel agency with their with their own bodies. 
But for me, every day of my life, I thought about my teeth. Um, particularly like I couldn't, I say this a lot, but it's like, I wasn't just fixing the gap in my teeth. I could not bite down. Biting an apple was yeah. like, biting an apple now is so sick. Uh, oh, I, every time I bite into a hamburger, I like look at it and I go, damn, that's a bite. <laughs> that's a that's whole a fucking, thing. Dude, that's like in the movies. <laughs> you can uh, put this on an ad, damn. I like truly to this day, it's, I had my razors on for like three or four years now and I still, every single bite I take, I think about it in a positive way. And that is so cool to mm -hmm. be able to like, reframe something where I'm like, I used to like be biting down and like sliding around or using the side of my mouth yeah. because those were the teeth that touched that I could bite with yeah. to like not having to do that. It's like still a thing I think about all the time. Um, I was wanting to use crest white strips and they just couldn't then fit. Oh yeah. It bumped up and down. I'd clean 5% of the teeth at a time. If people, um, well, like one thing that I've heard in the past, I don't know what the climate is on this today, but people are like, oh, you know, like, these types of surgeries, blah, 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 or these types of treatments, they're like a slippery slope because you want to fix this, that, and the other thing. I, it's been seven years uh, since I got this surgery, and it's like I've never once thought about going under the knife for anything. I like, I feel like I, that was like, I did it. I like, you know, you know, mission accomplished. And then, and then braces was a thing more about, um, how am, how am I going to live as an adult having braces? Mm. And then it turns out that no one gave a shit. Yeah. Yeah. Plus there, we've talked in the past, there is that similar to when you said you were wearing the binding, but what, oh, the, um, the vest. Or, mm -hmm. like oh, the compression, uh, vest. Uh, compression vest. Yeah. The, you know, when you, you say that out loud, it could be like, a, oh, you're self-conscious about the compression vest. But I do think it's bu like buffered by the fact that you're making progress. Like, Initially, I get the Invisalign on. I've got little things on my teeth. I'm doing so and so. I nothing had changed yet. First set, three days. I almost immediately stopped being self conscious about my teeth because it's happening. It's happening. I'm You're not self conscious about, about like it's gonna be the rest of my fucking life. I feel this way. That's that is such a powerful concept that when you're, um, you know, it's like if you're an out of shape person at the gym, like you're doing you're you're working on it so like I, like when i'm out of shape at the gym frankly i am out of shape and i haven't been at the gym and i'm trying to get back into being healthy and stuff uh i don't think about what uh like where i'm not because i'm on the path sure. and i think that that's like a really powerful thing to remember because if you're on the path you're on the path and that's like something that you can like in, like encourage yourself because it it's so hard to get yourself to do something and if you've been on the path in the past you know it's like a leverable thing you can do yeah like, i'm getting out of shape but i got in shape yeah. before and nothing's changed about yeah it. i mean that's a big thing for me uh because i uh i think i gained like let's see 40 pounds uh basically entirely during the pandemic and then I've kind of just like kind of, oh, I've been like slowly losing weight recently, but, and then I like lost a little bit for creator class, but then I had like a lot of trouble losing weight. Um, and I, and I, uh, actually, um, weight stuff is weird. Cause I don't want to sort of average, I don't want anything to come off as like an unhealthy thing. I'm just talking about my own experience and I, I'm not being prescriptive about what anybody else should do. But when it's I was just like- It's a metric and it's the one you use. It's, yeah. And it's also, um, I wanted to just be healthy and I, it, it, and I also just like didn't feel comfortable in my own skin. I think a lot of it's like not feeling comfortable in your skin, not feeling mm -hmm. able in my body. These are things that like I wanted to feel. And, um, and I, I lost like 50 pounds when I was like 21. And then I, uh, biggest fear was it all coming, like I, every the dam breaking and like gaining all that weight back. And it did take a global pandemic, you know, cause it's like, it's like I, you know, I, I, my lifestyle and stuff, I was like feeling really good. Uh, the peak was probably like right after I got that surgery, but then, um, peak of how you felt about how about, felt about my body and stuff. And then, uh, it was very scary for things to like go quote unquote downhill because you can frame it negatively. It can be a negative narrative that you have in your head, which, which at times I did. I'm no fucking saint. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, you know, practice makes perfect over here. And, uh, uh, and so I remember feeling like worse and worse about 
my body and worse and worse about myself and like that I wasn't doing anything about it. But eventually, and especially when I was doing creator clash and I felt like I was being active, I was being healthy. Um, and I just was the weight that I was, uh, I felt like a lot more com comfort with it. And I think I'm still like, not where I want to be in like, I don't know if it's fair to say this, but like, I'm not like in the perfect place, but I'm a lot more happy with my body as it is and mm -hmm. as I am now. And I think that's like a much healthier place to be than to be like beating yourself up for not achieving some sort of like goal. Sure. And I think we also know that it's not, it's not just not necessarily, it's often not just willpower that's getting in the way. Yeah. That's just not like, in both of our cases, medication has been very impactful, but also quality of life, but also experience telling you not to, to be stress. too burdened, stress, day-to-day -day life, travel. Yeah, like, global pandemic, big factor too. There are so many contributing factors that I think like, um, when you are younger and you can extrapolate that however you want, you can just call it like less experience regardless of age or whatever. If you start a new job, for example, there, when you feel doubtful or you feel negative or you're struggling with something, the our brains are built to try and prescribe it to something. Like the mystery is the worst possible scenario. Right. If you don't have a thing, an actual tangible thing that you've experienced in the past, you've been, again, not, not to be not to say over medicalized, but been diagnosed with, for example, an experience you've had in the past that was reflective and you got out of later, you only have you to blame. Mm -hmm. The only target your brain has is guilt mm -hmm. as opposed to like annoyance. Mm -hmm. Like when I get like, a little, I, I got, I got some pain right now because I haven't been taking care of the EDS stuff. Uh, it's, you know, my knees, my knees are struggling a little. Mm -hmm. I'm not ashamed of it. Yeah, I have been in the past. Yeah, but because I'm like, you know what it's been like. I'm, I was always figuring out my meds. Haven't been going to the psych enough. There's, there are um, foundations I know I have to build before I do something new and more challenging. Mm -hmm. I've never done. I'm supposed to have done physiotherapy my whole life. I haven't done it for like 15 years. Right. There is, I know that if something is for me, if something would benefit me and I'm unable to do it, that is not laziness or selfishness. Mm -hmm. If you can't get up and go and get a glass of water and your throat is dry and you're stuck in bed, that's not laziness or a lack of care. Yeah, yeah. Because it's only for you. Right. You want the water. Yeah, you want the thing. There is no like, <laughs> that. I use that examples because literally specifically for some reason that was the clicking moment for me mm -hmm. where I was, I was just really thirsty and I was having this cycle was years ago at this point, but this cycle of I am, I suck. I'm so lazy. I'm so selfish, yeah. which makes no sense as a type of guilt. It's about myself. It's so easy to, that narrative is so easy to jump into though, because society to, like is not like the messages that we hear in the world are not one size fits all yeah a lot of it's like put pick yourself up by your bootstraps well people are in different situations <laughs> you know how about we meet people where they are it's <laughs> such a funny phrase because it literally means something impossible yeah yeah i can't wanted to ask you Ugh. how are you doing i know you just got back from well thanksgiving just happened yeah hey and and Thank you you, your you went to the Midwest maybe for the first time. First time, ooh, well, Chicago. Oh, but I have this like I think when you go to a conference, it's not even going there. No, place. also Chicago's a big city. Yeah, it was. Uh, it honestly, dude, uh, it was cold. It was very cold. It was also extremely like cold. Chicago isn't really in the Midwest. It's. And it, well, I mean, even uh, Michigan, Illinois. where I went, is on it's Eastern the time. It's like the, yeah. I mean, really Midwest. Yeah, I was like, it says Midwest here, but yeah, but yeah. Midwest is just a tactful way of not calling that part of the country the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, if you look at a map of where the Midwest is, it's not in the middle of the West. I was always very confused. Like when people would try and describe it to me, I didn't quite understand how it worked it's um if you look at basketball conferences because the basketball conferences are um in the east and the west and most of the teams in the west are not on the west coast i can if you zoom into just the uh, the the midwest i can see the east coast <laughs> like it, yeah. uh, you can't hide all of it yeah that is not that is middle america there's less west that's the north 
North Middle. Middle. Man, <laughs> I'd say the entire West isn't in it. Oh, you know why it's probably called the Midwest? Because of like westward expansion. Oh, because like, that is because like all stages. the 13 colonies were like on the East Coast. And then they were like the we have to do what is it manifest destiny and we have to like venture venture west and so it's it's west in terms of east coast is what like defined america to mm. start and then everything else was going west. that makes sense that's that's where the oregon trail i don't trail, know that for sure but in my mind that's, that's like where oregon trail is going through yeah that's the adventure or the yeah, quest yeah. or whatever um yeah it was i mean it was nice i went over for uh, my partner's thanksgiving met met her family that was nice went to a very a, a nice wedding the most traditional wedding i've been to and it really made me notice how i i, I don't know all the the christian catchphrases like i don't know the and also with your spirit and stuff oh like that. i don't know that stuff i think that maybe catholic uh it's I, or it's I, a different like it's not one that i i went to like baptist sure. uh, cr christian baptist like church and that wasn't that was something that I didn't. We it's didn't definitely have. partially Catholic. I think it's American pro. It's like oh like, right, okay. Or maybe I don't know if they. I actually blend. don't know. Like I didn't know out of my depth here. Stay by stay regional or whatever. Church of England, which is the one that Henry VIII made so that he could get divorced. Legend. He specifically built it for that purpose, but it's kind of a conglomerate of some Catholic beliefs, some Protestant beliefs, and then it's kind of adopted as the default. I grew up in uh, doing. I was never religious. Neither was my family, but I, my elementary middle school so you would do hymns in the morning like it was mm -hmm. all kind of there i never thought about it critically i'm just like yeah it's school whatever you said yeah that. god none of that was any use at all it was it's like now if you like go back and look at curriculums you're like what is this new math they made <laughs> they made a new number right it feel, i felt like i was insane and every now and then people would they do this which is very i believe that's cat that's cat oh like, yeah far, yeah the little Mary, mother, what's going on? Yeah. Look at him up there. I just don't even, I think I know what it is, but now I'm like so scared <laughs> to be father, wrong. Son and father, Son, yeah, and Holy Ghost. Yeah, the Holy Trinity, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and they hit me with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I had ghosts coming out of my mouth. Oh, <laughs> I go, ghosts. And the Holy God. The big guy. <laughs> and then upstairs, huh? Um, what woman or hate these hey, days, dude? Hey. These friggin' who knows? Who you know, knows? These days. This is, I believe, a Matt Rife uh, part of his stand up. Oh, my God. Right. But yeah, it was nice. I, the trip itself was nice. I am thrilled to not be getting on a plane for more than a month. I have been flying so, and not for fun reasons. I've gone back right. to the UK, right? Yeah. People know about that. The only travel I would be doing is going to uh, the Pokemon Go tour event um, that's going to be happening in February. But it's in LA, baby. <laughs> yes, Let's go. Sir. I some fucking travel. Okay. Jealous. Get good, baby. Hey, hey. Uh, but yeah, it, it, overall positive. I mean, the, it's really, this can sound crazy, or maybe it doesn't. I mean, everybody's different with grief or whatever. It is so, even during the funeral, my, my mom died, people don't, I don't know. Welcome to, should have gone to the Squid Game title. <laughs> <Get out, please>. <laughs> 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 this is your punishment. Uh, we, um, that, that was the speech thing I mentioned earlier. And like, it, I have had such a long, it's been such a long kind of process, you know, 2021 was the stroke and it's been kind of going on ever since. I was, I'm sure people say this all the time, I legitimately was, I'd grieved. Mm -hmm. I was like very good, me and my aunt, we was us all the way through it. Yeah. We're set on it. It's never easy, it's a scar, not a, not a you know, I can't hide it forever, but. Right. I don't know, I got back, and we almost a week later, went up to the Midwest. I've been flying back and forth to the UK before. And yeah. all the whole time all I could think is like, it's nice to be in a new place. And, yeah. Oh, there's a Pokemon community. We're, we're going to go out with Katie's sister. I, I've never met her before. This is fun. This is yeah, what's going really on. Yeah, that's really nice. That's really nice. And I was just like, I kept waking the, the one we think I keep waking up with like one of three pop songs in my head, <laughs> and they are the ones we played at the funeral. Oh. And I don't wake up like <sighs> those, those right, dark songs. Right. It's instead like a because they're all pretty happy songs. I just yeah. wake up and like oh, vibe, dude. Yeah. Nice vibe. And then I remember, and then I feel weird for not being sad. Yeah, but that's, that's, <laughs> you have to like come in then and remind yourself that, uh, that grieving is all valid, you know? And I mean, thank God I'm not sad. I should just appreciate it for whatever well, yeah, reason. Yeah, exactly. But also, like, to me, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because this is a big leap, I, just as a friend, uh, and a friend who's like sort of in the neighborhood of things like this happening, um, 
there could be like a form of closure there yeah. where it's like there's the ramp up there's the anticipation there's the grief the eventuality mm-hmm. um and when something becomes an eventuality and an expectation then the grieving process can have begun already yeah you know what i mean felt be- like there were tutorials before i started the game you're bracing thing. yourself for impact mm. but you actually have already kind of put on your flotation device or whatever <laughs> yeah. so when you don't plunge underwater you're surprised mm. All right. It, You're like, okay, worked. this worked as intended, you know, and it's like, yeah. okay, but obviously like if, if anything changes, that's also a part of it, you know, cause mm. it's a, it's, it's kind of like that thing of, um, what progress looks like or what people think progress looks like. And it's like oh. a straight line. And then what it actually looks like is like this. Yeah. So it's like that for grief. You know, weirdly, I remember Jack, uh, Conti, Patreon co-founder, uh, that we used to work for, if you can believe it. Wow, why am I saying it like this? I say work with, <laughs> like we're peers. We would work at him. Uh, I, I did used to work, uh, sit behind him. Uh, at home? <laughs> oh, 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 I used office, to, I, I oh, I, oh, <laughs> at his home. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would sit behind him. He didn't know I was there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, he, we, we had a, at that very Patreon, he did a talk about the process of like, his music career, but also uh, Patreon is an extension of that and where he was with it now. And, and I can never remember it one for one. I wish I could, maybe I can find the slideshow somewhere, but I- A lot of his talks are on YouTube too. Oh, oh, he's, and he's almost certainly done that one. Yeah, yeah his, check that out. I mean, you know- uh, Very articulate guy. I mean, I uh, he's the CEO of a big tech company, so criticize him all you want. Yes. He's a good speaker. Uh, and a lot of his talks, uh, especially for creators, are are good. So Very digestible. But yeah. anyhow, um, he did a talk at that Patreon about, he, I can't remember if he described this way, but the graphic he has, it's like his career experience and creative journey should look like a series of lines. Mm-hmm. And instead it's like pointillism. And it just goes up and it's a single dot that's so far off, it's almost useless. Right. Like, it's like, oh, it turns out that the example he gave was uh, him and a friend of his were voice actors for The Sims 3's teen characters. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, both aspiring musicians, they started a band called We Have Faces 2. Right. And I I can kind of see the calculus. It was, it was like, him. He, he did, I think it was like Sims 2. He did boy. boy. And then the person who did girl. Yeah. They they made they made a, an album together about how they are real people. And, and I not could, just the voices of the Sims speaking yeah. in Simlish. <laughs> but you could, I like on some level, I see how you would get there. I see the mm-hmm. process. I see the, like the neurons firing. That's but me. But ultimately, of course that didn't work. <laughs> like oh. why would somebody be like, oh, the Sims people have an album. I have to get in there. That's me making a video called uh, Jarvis Johnson is the worst channel on YouTube. Uh, after making the five minute crafts video and not wanting to be like the life hacks guy and also mm. wanting to roast myself before anyone could. Yeah. Uh, now there's an audience for it. At the time, not so much. Yeah, it's a <laughs> tall, tall it order. It was a little Big bit ask. putting the director's commentary before the movie <laughs> type yeah. thing. Talking on the, designing the red carpet when you find a title for the, your movie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, man. Hey, you know, I'm all right. I did have a wonderful... It was it was a really nice time. I don't have a lot of traditional Thanksgiving. This is my second like traditional one because all the others like Friendsgivings or like hangouts yeah, or, yeah. or nothing. Sometimes I missed it, but yeah, it was a chill hang, very dog focused, which was always good. <laughs> um, I did have, you know, mentioning me sometimes when I lose my shit and I just start laughing and I just can't stop laughing and I just my like church laughter style. <laughs> We have it on the board. Way calm, man. Um, partway through, me and Katie, we have the dog with us. So so Fox is in a little backpack. She's been really uncharacteristic. Fox is a little dog with... Yeah, uh, Pomeranian-sized. Pomeranian-sized dog with a lot of spunk. A lot of... like She's juiced up. <laughs> and she loves socializing. She's very excited about dogs and people, but also very quickly becomes overstimulated and starts barking if she can't get to them. She's very leash reactive. She's getting really good, but... We'd never, she'd never been on a plane. She'd never been around that many people. So we were very anxious. It was a spirit flight. So basically everyone could touch the damn dog. Damn. And she was so good. 
Oh. That we eventually started like st- no longer looking at the bag and actually started being in the world. Right. We watched a season, like, most of a season of The Lost. Yes, we did. Ooh, ooh. Just what get- season are you on now? Getting into season five. Oh, We've shit. We've been going crazy. Dude, season four, I think, was the one that I rewatched the most. I think season four is the best season so far. Dude, I the love Desmond season The Desmond episode, dude. The constant, Are dude? you kidding me? Are you joking? You should do a... <sighs> Not Penny's boat, dude. Oh. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Incredible. I, it's just really exactly where I want it. Yeah. If you never watched it, also, I recommend people watch Mr. Robot because it does a lot of the same insane bullshit mm, I recommend mm, mm, mm. anyhow we are on the plane and finally once we start gazing around we wrap up our season Katie points out that there is a guy two rows ahead of us which also this is my nightmare if I'm watching something on a plane on like an iPad or something and right. someone behind me is watching it the fear like Judging what watching I'm watching or you? Do, watching me watching. Oh my god! I was just on oh, a plane. Those old Virgin TVs, and I'm watching I was a on movie. a plane watching someone else watch the wedding ep- Jim and Pam wedding episode of The Office because <laughs> yeah. they had the captions on. And <laughs> oh, I was like, don't do that! And I was like, hey, I haven't, I haven't seen this in a while, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, devastating! I'm trying to watch John Wick too, and I know someone's enjoying it from a distance. Yeah, yeah. But we're, Katie pointed out that on a big like professional scale Wacom tablet which is a drawing tablet for people don't know like a digital drawing tablet was watching an episode of Friends in extreme 4K HD on a Wacom he's he's got his stylus out he's like drawing (laughs) it's frame by frame yeah drawing it really quick but he that's already like oh interesting okay hey man if you if you're an illustrator and you have one of those and it's the one of the ones with a screen that you know media screen Hey, watch it. It's oh, super LCD. Go for it. He is watching Friends, and I started to notice every single time Joey is in a scene, he skips it. <laughs> he fucking, nothing else. He fucking hated Joey. <laughs> I couldn't stop <laughs> And it was it was the episode where Joey and Chandler like leave Ross's they're babysitting and they accidentally leave Ross's baby on the bus and they're like, where can we find him? <laughs> there was a scene that was just Chandler. He stopped watching it again. <laughs> And then Joey would come back and he'd skip it. And then he got it done. I was losing my fucking mind. Why? <laughs> what so could have happened? Funny. Wow. What happened? Why? What is this relationship? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and then there was. The, <laughs> he was in the last scene where the whole cast is in the roof. <laughs> Skipped until Joey left. <laughs> and then watching it. Uh, oh, dude, it was. I could not stop looking at it. And that like, is so funny. I'm like, I can't laugh too loud because the dog's gonna wake up, go mm, nuts. Right. It's, 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 it's church bird. laughter. Yeah, yeah. We're close to people. There's a guy sleeping right at the end of our aisle, and I, I have never in my life wanted to ask more of someone on a plane and be like, oh, dude, I know. I know we're all tired. Yeah. It was, we just came from from the damn freezing cold, but please explain to me why, what you think about Joey. <laughs> no judgment. Do you not like Matt LeBlanc? Yeah. You know, like the performance, what's going on here? Is the catchphrase annoying? Um, I, we didn't talk about this on the show, but I guess we should, you know, say that, uh, that Matthew Perry recently passed away mm-hmm. and that's a huge tragedy. Wonderful performer and also a very, big advocate for um, addiction and recovery mm-hmm. uh, as uh, he struggled in a chunk of friends. And he's like, I, I did not know this really, you know, um, I guess he wasn't, you know, he, 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 he was doing it altruistically. He wasn't like pushing it as a social media user or whatever, yeah. but he was very, very, yeah, he was really active in philanthropy for addiction centers and research and did a lot of uh, interviews through, I think, a you can interview on Piers Morgan's scummy show or whatever, like half a decade ago, and he is very articulately just being mm. like, well, you're literally just not using your brain. <laughs> like, you're not thinking at all. Yeah. You need to actually consider people's emotions. You're a bad yeah. guy. Your face is weird. You're like a melted candle. Well, yeah, it's a celebration of life and also, you know, a, a, a rest in peace for, for Matthew Perry. Though I have Jarvis's doctor update. I will forget to mention this if I don't. I was just like minding my own business the other day and I got an email from my doctor and I go, uh Oh, and then 
uh, we're recording this December 1st is a, a day or two away. My doctor goes, just so you know, starting in December, I'll be on uh, maternity leave for like a year. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my, so my thoughts are simultaneously congrats and also I really wish I knew <laughs> that my doctor would be gone for a year mm. because that's a beautiful thing. I'm I'm so excited for them to start their family. I feel like I'm not allowed to have a problem with this, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I do have to say as a patient and anxious one, uh, I don't, there's nothing I can do to prepare for this now yes. because I just have to talk to someone else oh. about all of my problems. God, that's so like, this is like when a, a, a package gets stolen or something and I do just go from like, hey, you know, live and let live to like, we should have the death penalty <laughs> and there should be CCTV cameras everywhere. And like, I just immediately lose no, all my it's, principles. It's a thing where it's like, I absolutely have no no problem with it, but- uh, I should send a, the baby to a facility until I am patient, satisfied. As a patient, I'm like, let go, I have to go, I have to go, let go of the fact that this is the person who has all of the context on all of your sleep and fatigue stuff. Okay, let go of that, let go of that. I am free. You are free, you are free, it is okay, it is okay. Congrats, oh, oh my wow, God, that's oh my so God. Sick. How long you said? <laughs> no, but it's like, I have no problem with any, like I hope it's clear what I'm saying here, that like <laughs> I have no problem with any of it except for uh, I'm being selfish in this moment, <laughs> but I will, say that like I just wish I had a little bit more of a day than a day because it is harder <laughs> yeah. it, it's hard to get any sort of doctor's appointment within a 24-hour period about anything <laughs> um but it's fine everything's everything's fine I'm just be, I'm just I'm just joking around it is I mean I mean shout out to the everything else about the U.S. medical system I think it's I mean I'm glad that they have the, some so much maternity leave that's fucking sick yes that's, I mean California oh, has very yeah it's for great its issues has very good uh um, leave protocols and stuff. I, I, I'd advocate for more. I'd advocate for everyone. I want everybody to spend all the time with their kids. Yeah. A good friend of ours got, um, he worked from home and then the other partner uh, worked remotely and would have to travel a lot. And uh, he got a ton of paternity leave. Yeah. It was and they got to do all the adaptation. They got to like, first kid, uh, been together a long time, married you know only only a few years ago moved semi recently there's yeah. a lot to adapt to and they got to do that they got to do a it's whole a beautiful stage. thing when yeah. like yeah the parents can be pre it's like seems ridiculous to have this not be the standard but that the parents can be present can both be present and not be stressed about like all the external factors of like putting food on the table and stuff yeah. because you were doing a thing that is like a very very difficult thing to do because more um, often than not you have you work for an organization that giving you that time would be just not even a noticeable dot on their revenue. They could easily afford it so that you have like, you know, the right that all people should have to yeah, like yeah. have a child. Uh, yeah, shout out to America or whatever. Um, cool. Uh, the There's also a Matt Reif update. It was just a no, celebrity it? plastic surgeon who, who knows if they have any sort of association with Matt Reif, posted a TikTok, which is just like, that's a whole thing. The the snarky surgeons of TikTok is like a weird, <laughs> yeah. this is a weird space. Or the the plastic surgeons who like find somebody who's like minding their own business and they're like, here's how I would fix their face. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, day one, buccal surgery, nasty. Yeah, Yuck. Look yeah. at them. Take out the jaw. Replace it with a, a pterodactyl <laughs> fossil jaw. Give hands, them nice swap masculine hands. energy. New Left hands. hand on back. <laughs> yeah. Reverse the hands. Reverse the butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's but, talk about but reversal disease. surgery. Um, and so this guy posted me after creating the greatest jawline ever seen just for my patient to get canceled right after. And I think he hashtagged some stuff about stand up comedy. But the weird thing is that Matt Reif responded. Yeah, that's a bad call. Like, because I guess all the comments were like tagging him and stuff, which is also ridiculous. But uh, this person could have just been engagement farming. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, it, which is like fucked up, by with, the way, for them to do, especially not, given their position. But, but also not with a lot of, unless that screenshot was taken very early, that's 261 likes on TikTok. Yeah, it wasn't a super, yeah, I don't know what the engagement level of that. I mean, now it's gone hella viral, sure. so who knows. But um, but then Matt Reif says, allegedly, I don't know if this comment is still there, lying about medical history is illegal, just FYI, which is a terrible response. <laughs> 
Uh, this is like when he uh, was like, uh, here's a link to my apology. And it was like that merch or yeah. whatever. This is, you're a comedian. You should be able to banter. You should be able to razz them back. This is weak. Dude. There's too many. There's too many implications. Because like now his joke implies that there is he would that this guy would know something about his medical <sighs> history, right? And if he knows anything about his medical history, there's HIPAA, which would be he would be in violation <laughs> of. So it's like there's so many things where it's like you shouldn't have responded at all. No. Uh, uh, Should have had more raise if you did. Um, he, he could have been like LMAO, uh, calling HIPAA RN. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sure. like, like maybe, maybe if you're gonna reply, it's just like no one now. Now everyone thinks it's real. Now everyone thinks you got this guy to fi do your jaw, uh, and we don't know if. And it doesn't matter. This is actually ties back, and it doesn't matter if Matt Rife has had any sort of. Plastic surgery. That is not. Who cares? Yeah. Um. It's uh. It's more. This is a very strange, um. Very strange post by the the surgeon, and then Matt Rife shouldn't have responded. I don't know why he did that. It's a little bit of an own goal. It's very. It's poor self preservation. Because sure. if if it's, but then also I get that he doesn't want people to uh. To like like look at his body and try to guess if he's had any work done like that i wouldn't wish that wish that on anyone um and but if that is your goal don't respond yeah. that is the most damage you can do like i, I i'll yeah, say but maybe he's in a lose-lose situation you know it's like yeah, i will make fun of the context of, the surgeon's the worst party in that yeah dialogue. this yeah. this sucks um what i will say for sure uh is he probably at this point We've crossed into a territory where like everyone feels morally okay making fun of like Matt Rife's appearance and stuff, which is whatever. Uh, yeah. I don't I don't personally think it's like because he uh acted like an asshole in these instances and made light of these like horrible things, we should like make fun of this other thing about him. People feel emboldened because you know Matt Rife's jokes to them harm them or are targeting mm -hmm. targeting people um, in a certain community, and so it's like if you can target these people, why can't we target you? So I'm not here to pass like a moral judgment on it, but uh, in general, commenting on people's bodies is it sucks. This is yeah. a weird <laughs> this is a weird situation because it's it's people get into eye for an eye mode on social media, sure. and I. I'm not here to I'm not here to defend Matt Reif. I think we're more in the camp of like, okay, I don't care. I don't care about like this in this specific example. Yeah. But I I don't understand. It's a very online like way of thinking. I've never really understood why to do every single commenter or every single discourse person has to like philosophically justify being rude online. Yeah. I don't care. Just be, yeah. they'll just be like, uh, hey, you're ugly. And then someone's like, that's kind of inappropriate. I'm like, well, actually, you'll f I, you don't need to justify it. You can just be mean. Yeah. I don't care. Some people are just mean. Just, and you don't like, have to, I'm not making a moral judgment because I don't know you. Yeah. I don't it, care to. Yeah. And it's like, also, I'm not people's parent. You yeah. know, it's like, I'll, I'll do what I do. I'm, yeah, whatever. If somebody replied to me once, like, uh, you, I just said, like, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse posted something like right after the the, main, the first Kyle Rittenhouse shit first happened. And I like quote tweeted it and I just said like, uh, I'm gonna flush you down the toilet or something. You know, like I'm gonna put you in a dog kennel. <laughs> like, yeah, just yeah. nothing. Nothing. And someone was like, you know, he's a minor. And I'm like, oh, that means he right. can't do. He can't kill people. Actually, uh, yeah, it's actually illegal. In yeah, fact. it's cool if it that. And then I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't care. Is the thing. Yeah. It wasn't that I didn't. <laughs> you can't correct my morals, and then I'll be like, mm, either. But what so many people do is they go like, well, no. Let me justify the fact that he is a mind. I'm not mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't like Kyle Rittenhouse. That's right. the beginning and end of the point that I'm making. Yeah. If Matt Rife was 17 and made those jokes, I would still say they were cringe. And yeah. You like, don't like him. <laughs> which you're get, allowed not to like him. Like, and I don't not know doing, him. You're yeah, not just calling for anything to happen. You're just saying. Uh, I don't like the joke. Yeah, you, <laughs> this is a mid bit. Yeah, I don't like the action. <laughs> Have you seen the Tana Matt Rife clip? Yeah, that's awesome. The, in, in the in the group chat, I think the one that we knocked. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We should play it though. It is really um, funny. 
that's the thing. I don't really hate anybody. Some- I don't. Here's here's a very humbling experience that I've. Uh, sorry, I guess epiphany that I've had recently. And the, because so many fucking people hate me for really no reason. No, nope, no reason. And it really no. made me realize that like people Nothing only hate somebody they're jealous of. And I've been, oh. I've been guilty of hating people. And when I really sat back and thought about it, it was because I was jealous of where that person was in their life. I felt like maybe they got an opportunity that I should have gotten. That was yeah. a really, really good, well-rounded answer. I'm trying to wrap my Thank head you. around. Do you think people who hate Osama bin Laden are jealous of him? <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I don't really hate him. Yeah, oh, it's looping. Look at rolled dude yeah, that, that <laughs> absolutely is so fucking devastating funny, dude. <laughs> i i ha- i want to know how he responds we don't have time but well i think right at the end like, yeah. oh he's like they're gonna do a yeah. bit right yeah. oh that's weird maybe he is doing uh, i'm sure he's going to maybe but that. anyway um that's just such a f- Oh, I mean, this is actually kind of sad in, in part because this is the beginning. I, not to be fatalist about it or whatever, kind of feels like the beginning of the end for being out of touch. Mm. Like, okay, I'm doing kind of hack comedy. Hey, sometimes people do that. It's a Netflix special. Maybe you lost a little bit of confidence in your more esoteric comedy. You're going to do some basic bullshit. Whatever. Kind of some basic bitch comedy. That's fine. You're whatever. I don't think it's very strong. Whatever. I don't hate you, Matt Rife. I don't know you. The thing that every celebrity, regardless of level, does before they just become annoying is start saying that, yo, haters have become waiters. I, they're, every single, the haters, they're just lying, they're just being mean, and I don't have anything to improve about myself. It's a conspiracy. So, it's, no, it's, no development. it's weird that, like, it's no reason. <laughs> like, I think that even <laughs> if I, I was seemingly being hated on for no reason, I would try to work to understand... There has to be a reason. I might think the reason's invalid, but it, it could doesn't not, yeah, not it could exist. Not be an in, it could be an invalid reason, 100%. Like, um, also, we followed up by saying because they're jealous. Well, like even people if you think hated that's it. child Justin Bieber for invalid reasons. Yeah. I would say it. You know, because... But not like they didn't just wake up feeling it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <sighs> those, but, like, but like those are... Uh, but the reasons were like of they were like where we were as a society right mm-hmm. like it's and and then people like if you look at how 15 year old justin bieber was treated it was absolutely absurd yeah. uh and people hate any ya stuff that is for girls mm-hmm. there's They're, like that exactly there's like that thing and the, there could be an element to that with uh with matt rife if it's like if if his audience is predominantly women and he's in the boys club that is like stand-up comedy it's you know it, it is still predominantly a boys club mm-hmm. then uh maybe that that's where that hate's coming from. He's interpreting it. He goes, this is invalid, but then he like comes to the wrong conclusion, which is what I think is very funny. He describes it as a humbling epiphany, a humbling epiphany that something. everyone else is just jealous of me. Yeah. I actually, prior to this, I kind of thought that when people criticized me, they were saying it for a reason, but mm-hmm. actually it's the children who are wrong. It is just that <laughs> Simpsons bit. It's yeah. just him like, wait a minute, but what if I'm, Poggers. Could it be? <laughs> Okie dokie. What a devastating way to fucking live. <laughs> like, just getting in a, getting, like, fender bendering someone and then just being like, wait, I know everything, all evidence, and every single observer would say it was my fault. But when they say that, I feel bad. Also, so I don't think it's true. Also, some people do hate for no reason. Oh, yeah. uh, some people like doing it like nickelback jokes i would say that like a small percentage of people in even nowadays imagine dragon jokes a small percentage of the people hate the music most people are just along for the meme mm-hmm. you know what i mean like it's just i mean i think those people just don't even hate them really right they, it's like they you hate, don't really they they, they hate a, they love a joke it's, yeah it's they like love a, a joke they love a joke at the expense that presents as hate and it's if you interpret it as hate i think it's normal to interpret it that way uh but if you interpret it as hate it probably doesn't have a reason or the reason is just that people uh like the joke more than they like empathizing with mm-hmm. you <laughs> and i'm sure he's bundling just all criticism in with hate mm-hmm. i don't hate matt rife but I think that special is kind of doo doo. <laughs> like, it doesn't mean I hate him. He seems, he seems like a nice um, guy. Seems somewhat personable. Seems like famous breaking his brain. Okay, we didn't talk about it in the first the uh, episode that we talked about Matt Rife. So there's a little mini sode on Matt Rife. Me up, pal. We have to address him dropping the mic 
Oh yeah. At the end of the special, he goes, um, I have the clip. But what do I know? I only do crowd work, right? Dude. It's like, it's like parody. It is like parody. Um, I, I'm not upset oh, by the way. I'm not pissed off that people say that. I watched some old comedians like on podcasts, not to name any, but reacting to this and like even they were like i didn't like the mic drop <laughs> yeah it's, tack, it's like tacky yeah uh also i, I asked you to pull up same energy right on the next tab oh yeah this the old my old favorite post um, ever ricky gervais with a mic stand over his shoulders and atheist written on his chest <sighs> a crown of thorns atop his goofy ass head. oh my god dude <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> it's crazy. You should be required to like see this in a reply every time Ricky Gervais has a bad opinion. It's also next to a magazine caption on the cover that says, Insight and Analysis, Africa's Imaginary Gay Crisis. What the hell is this? Wh why? Tact. What is have this? Have some tact. What is this magazine? I don't want to know. We don't have time for Humanist. this. All right. Dot org dot UK. Get out of here. Well, we don't have time for that because we've got to get in to Squid Game. Time to Squid. It's time for Squid Game. You've been waiting for it. Give me the ink. We made you wait. Cover me in Squid Ink. So you've seen the Netflix smash hit Squid Game, a critique of capitalism and what people will do for life-changing amounts of money. And then the bit at the end where he dyes his hair red. I don't know what that was about. Yeah, I mean, hey, well, he's about to become the bad guy, maybe oh, season yeah. two. We don't know. Dude, that's some advanced color theory. <laughs> he, he put the gross horns. He's uh, he's red, so that means his auto insurance is more expensive. Oh, no. Auto insurance. Um, yeah, so Squid Game. Hold on. Can we pull up the name of the Squid Game reality show? Because it's a bad name. That's my it's, first it's, it point. It sucks. We watched a couple of episodes. There's only a couple of episodes out. But we watched a bunch of uh, Squid Game. We've both uh, brought notes. <laughs> so we have many not, notes. We have not shared our notes. So this is going to be our our opinions. Oh, yeah. If you just go to images, the uh, it, there's like an icon for it that's like looks stupid. Uh, there it is. Oh, here we go. Squid Game, the challenge, a reality <laughs> competition. Tara, what is that? Dude, this is like, just call it Squid Game re reality. I don't know. Squid Game, the challenge actually works by itself. Yeah, we didn't need a reality competition as the sub subtitle. Critique him as you will. This show is doing gangbusters for Netflix. It's doing very well. It's probably breaking all the records it needs to break, oh, yeah. which is which is a bad thing, I think. I mean, where do we even start? Can we just play the beginning of episode one? It's like Willy Wonka in a chocolate factory going after the golden ticket. <laughs> Wait, sorry, can you pause for half a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually my first time step that I wrote down. I'm like, do you mean a game show? Also- A golden, you mean every game show? Yeah, but also Willy Wonka is also based on, or, or like Willy Wonka is the fictional thing. And then there's like the real life golden ticket with the like Wonka bars and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's just like a promotion on a candy bar. And actual Willy Wonka is very dark, right? It, he's a terrible, he's like a bad guy. Yeah, yeah. He's completely okay with kids potentially dying. And also he doesn't give you a bunch of money. He burdens you with a building. <laughs> um, well, okay. My, my first point is just that they worked too hard. Oh, I guess we should explain what this is. So 456 contestants compete for $4.56 million in a entirely too accurate to the show <laughs> Squid Game competition. Like distractingly accurate. Distractingly. And also they have mimicked the Squid Game show to the point that they have reverse engineered psychological torture in the form <laughs> of a game show. Yeah. It's like very sad. And 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 uh yeah, so they do the stuff from the show and then there's additional stuff and there's twists and turns and you start to like a reality show does, you start to learn about the characters, but every one of their stories is sad because we 
live in a time where we're not doing so well. The economy's in the shitter. People can't afford basic needs. And quality of living for a huge portion of the population globally, but including the U.S. is down. Yeah, toilet. this takes place in the U.S. People are have student debt. They have medical debt. They have uh, th they need to take care of their families. You know, people can't afford can't afford to live. People can't afford, especially not buy homes mm -hmm. like there was a uh, there was a great tweet uh, that was maybe I can find it because I don't want to. This is really capturing why game shows aren't fun anymore. It's not money to take the family to Disney anymore. It's money to pay off student loan debt, save yeah. the family house, or finally afford to get the health, your health needs met. Like, there is no, I mean, that's why so few of them have prize items. Like, you want a new Audi. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I'm, but I'm still on the lease for my other car. That doesn't yeah. solve this problem for me. I would need to sell the Audi immediately. Can Listen. we cut out the middleman and just give me cash? Oh, this one has way higher insurance premiums because it, oh, good, sick. Thank you so much, Oprah. I guess this is my problem now but that you've given me. While this is a game show, they have gone out of their way to talk about the financial strife mm. and, and just the sort of down on their luck positions that the people competing are in in order to what, drum up sadness when they get eliminated from the show? Like, what is the point? This show, and I think for a lot of pretty obvious reasons, uh, obviously we don't have to go into it too much, is just in its bones a broken idea. Yeah. It cannot, the, a one-to-one -one or attempted one-to-one -one translation of Squid Game to a reality TV challenge cannot work because Squid most of the show is A, about not knowing what the games are going to be. Mm. It's about figuring it out. And B, is a cultural critique of something like this existing. It's not only about the fact that they're killed at the end of it. Granted, that's like the big- Isn't that element. crazy? They, yeah, they die. But it's, but you that, know- But that's a metaphor, maybe. Yeah, it's like, yeah. They, when they die in the fact that they're just kind of sent back and like them dying was the same as them just being sent back to their quality of life every right. main character in the show is on the risk of death even the bad guy with the big snake tattoo he was like attacked by uh, gangs on a bridge had to run away then escape every a bunch of them are allowed to choose to leave in the original show mm -hmm. they choose to and then they all come back because of how poor their quality of life yes. is that is and this is their only option the critique that it's making isn't the it would be bad to kill someone on a game show. That can't be it. But also there's nothing whimsical about suffering in like a very basic fixable way. Like yeah. these are not, none of these problems are things that like some kind of tiny bit of legislature change, uh, uh, better benefit and support services right. implemented couldn't also fix. Instead, it's a bunch of people going like, yeah, I, I just really hope I'm able to make it to the end so that I can pay off my medical debt. There is literally <laughs> it starts the woman that you have all we've already shown you. It starts with her saying a little bit about the dream of living without debt. And spoiler alert, she's immediately eliminated. Yeah. Like, and that is a fucking theme of the show. Can we play like like yeah. and, by, uh, by the way, spoiler warnings for I don't know, the first two episodes mm -hmm. of the Squid Game reality show and for the Squid Game TV show, because we'll, cause we'll, you know, it, of which it, on which it's based. Um, but you probably knew that. But I think it's important to be able to talk about the, the sort of nitty gritty details. Um, oh yeah, Squid Game The Challenge, would you say, is a spinoff of the show Squid Game. <laughs> yeah, in case you can tell, it's a reality competition. <laughs> Uh, yeah, go ahead and keep playing. <laughs> Sorry, can I throw one random thing out? Yeah. They, um, as you said, there's, it's like a, an accurate recreation to kind of a ridiculous degree. Um, I kept chuckling every time they would bring out the pink suited enforcer guys, because I kept thinking like, this is a mole cop. You can't fucking touch me. The, you can't intimidate me, dog. I think they're just like choreographers and producers yeah like or, or, or dancers or whatever they're like people who like can do all of the the like motions because they're but they have re they have reverse engineered we've worked backwards into creating the stanford prison experiment for real yeah. and and uh i would prefer 
if so many of the elements were fictionalized that it was actually a work of fiction and it was called Squid Game the show and it already yeah. exists. And maybe had something to say and do. Yeah. Um but yeah they they have the they have the enforcers, which I think adds to the like kind of darkness of it. It has the enforcers in like little like looking at little monitors, which is for sure dramatized because it's just, you know, producers at their own desks or whatever. Um, looking at the stuff, but the way that they have recreated the Sanford prison experiment is instead of um, the prison guards being the ones wielding the power, it's the fucking reality show producers. And we've kind of lost the plot on rea- reality shows already been the rules. They already been storylines. We it, we've heard this story time and time again of how producers kind of cook the stories. They tell people mm-hmm. to say certain things. They tell them to like play into certain things. They set conversation topics and such. Which but, is not, you know, necessarily unethical or anything. It's like, you know, a magician isn't really doing magic. It's a part of it. But yeah. when it is it's affecting an, it, it's the- It's an understood part of it from the audience yeah. or whatever, yeah. The wrestling's kind of pre-scripted, but yeah. the performance is impressive. But the w- behavior of the producers. It's its truly evil. Like, <laughs> I did not know that this, um, like, uh, we I've talked, I've made a career of talking about some of the sort of evils of the old, you know, like early, you know, uh, uh, early 2000s reality television. This is like, wow, I can't believe they made this in 2023 because the degree of evil feels like it's from a, <laughs> yeah. a bygone era. It feels like it's medieval. <laughs> like it's, um, why are you... Oh, well, sorry. One point I'll throw out is like people seen Squid Game. The ultimate villains or the, the benefactors of the whole thing are these, you know, um, for the most part, uh, Westerners the original show takes place in Korea and it's for the most part Westerners that are fetishizing like Mm -hmm. violence and and torture and they're so desensitized to whatever you know they and they turn up in the golden masks and And they're they're so desensitized that they're entertaining themselves by making real people fight for bankrolling a a death game and they watch them on high and they, they turn up pretty late in the show and the point is that hey man a lot of these people are kind of applied to be like the Murdochs or other media conglomerate owners. Like Ted Sarandos, the yeah. CEO of Netflix. <laughs> Something like it's that. like, yeah, those people exist in real life. It's like everything that they're commenting on, the, it's like everyone said this. We, we, we've Everyone's already made the point that they missed the point of the show. But we're sure. kind of trying to talk about in the ways that they missed the point of the show, which is that those people exist. They're called the VCs who invest in Netflix, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the major stakeholders of the company. The people who, with so much equity that they can never be in poverty. It can't happen. Yeah, the executive producers who go, 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 no, turn it up, turn up the... because. The cruel, it's like turning up the cruelty meter because to them it's also the money meter. There's literally no reason not to in their brain. In their brain, absolutely, because it doesn't matter if it betrays the the purpose and the message of the original piece because it'll be successful. You never cared about it in the first place. And like, does it matter if it, yeah, I didn't care about it in the first place. I I just seen the show. We just (laughs) just paid the minimum rate for like acquiring somebody's thing. Uh, and that's why, you know, the original creator of Squid Game didn't see a huge payday because he sold it to Netflix for like the equivalent of pennies on the dollar for mm. what it generated for Netflix becoming its most streamed show. And there's no royalty clause in yeah. that in that contract. So, you know, my uh, this is not a critique of um, the creator of Squid Game nor Squid Game the uh, show because Squid Game, the show kind of knows, at least it's, it's it's trying to say something. And it's also a work of art that like took many people who cared deeply about it a very long time to make. Mm-hmm. And also the season two that they're making, you know, the, the creator is going to get his big payday probably because now he's got all the leverage to negotiate. And so like... Th- I don't want poor things for the the Squid Game IP when it comes to the creator and the people who are invested in it. But this feels like a, a, a cash grab license. Oh, yeah. Because reality TV is the cheap to produce, uh, high profit margin thing. It's the reason that 
the company that produces Property Brothers was the one that bought HBO. It's like yeah. the people who make the really cheap to produce reality TV bought the really uh, art, art, artistic, artist forward um, home box office brand. Like, and it's why we have Max now. <laughs> I mean, if it weren't for the fact that like, like one of the other broken things about this show is that because it's on Netflix and because they have a very specific formula that reality TV has to follow, it has this like traditional Western reality TV aesthetic, American reality TV mm -hmm. aesthetic for something that's completely at odds with that. They, yeah. they have to have these confessionals and stories and interpersonal relationships and stories about like, ambition like i'm all rise and grind bro i'm gonna figure this one out i'm doing push-ups at night yeah. and it, like it if you everyone's take, gotta fit into the reality tv archetypes yes because they don't know how to do it in any other way which means that all the like weird creepy macabre part of squid game which is the reason everything else is so bright and colorful it's a reason it's kids games it's juxtaposition that's what's creepy mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it when you take that away it's just a bunch of annoying people playing children's games but I still think that it's way darker and sadder than it should be without any sort of like levity or oh. or upside. Like I I wrote down in my notes. Should be actually note mode. Uh, I was like, this needs a host. <laughs> like like uh, because I I was like, you know, what the Mr. Beast video was able to avoid in all this is it had Mr. Beast and Carl Jacobs going, go go yeah. do the thing, do the thing, and then you're like, oh, it's a game. We can actually like look at this as a game yeah. instead of shooting it like it's a fucking horror documentary <laughs> about these people losing their chance, their last chance at salvaging their lives. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, I, that's another thing about like uh, it, probably the closest to the way they do confessionals on this, and then it's a question of like, will they fail? Won't they? It's usually contained with an episode. Is like American Idol. Yeah. It's a little bit of a backstory and is it going to work? And they kind of juke you, you know? They go like, oh, this story was really sad, but they actually didn't win. But those stories are, while like they have a financial element of, more often than not, and they have like a dream and an ambition, they don't treat it like their last chance. Yes. This is my dream, not my desperate attempt to survive. And I feel to give credit to the human contestants on this very inhumane yeah. show, I have to imagine that it is the producers who are making them play this up like it's their last chance because the obvious thing to say is, well, why would you place so much importance in a game where you have no chance of winning? You should go into this like you're winning the lottery, like you basically have no shot, right? Mm -hmm. And yet so many people, the stakes are so high. Why is that? Are they, Did they... Uh, not do wellness screens on like the the people that you know. Uh, there's a lot of people on the show that feel like they shouldn't be on the show. Mm -hmm. it, they're either acting or I'm concerned. They're suffering. Yeah, or they are truly suffering in and ways that aren't even really like in accordance with the Squid Game vibe. There's just people who get nauseous really easily, and it's just kind of sad. Yeah, there's people that start crying not because something happens, but because they're just like stressed it's just like there's hundreds of people in this room and everyone's yelling and yeah. they're just like okay let's 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 jump to the room well so first of all i set up a clip about five minutes ago and we didn't watch it so let's uh, let's watch uh let's just hit play jacob pause again okay we're gonna get to the sad clip that i set up already but the we talked about the beds and so that reminded me i wanted to we, we've now shown they all live and this is wild also they all live in a giant fucking i don't know air plane hanger yeah, like a warehouse a warehouse <laughs> that's that's lined with bunk beds as fucking high as the eye can see i do like not. the show I do not know what the like, insurance plan was on this project. Like dystopian, by the way. Put, oh, this terrifying! Is, this was meant to, like in the show. <laughs> I think this is how it is in the show, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of broader and, and and shaped differently, but it's you know in the show it's meant to evoke some pretty heavy stuff. I kind of didn't want to say out loud. Maybe maybe some stuff that you shouldn't do in real life. Just a thought. And so the fact that they did this for real is insane to me. Yeah. 
it just feels like a torture show. I, but then there's something all, like even more insidious about the fact that uh, it keeps asking us to chuckle. Like as the show goes along and there's little moments, it'll say, it feels like the show and the way it's produced and the way it's cut does not know how tragic many of the backstories are. Like, it'll be like, yeah, I don't know if I could handle this without this person in my life. It's actually been really difficult. And then like hard cut with a little musical stinger and they lost. Like, yeah, it, it's like, that, so I will spoil episode one. Uh, yeah, this guy is like me and my brother or me and my, me and my best friend, we've been through everything <laughs> together. We're, uh, we're rivals, but we're friends and we keep pushing each other to be better. So as long as I know I've got him with me, we're gonna be great. And then red light, green light goes, and then he goes, huh! and then what happens? We haven't talked about it yet. He gets eliminated, but how does he get eliminated? So in regular Squid Game, they die. Um, Chris Kyle style. And uh, they have decided to emulate that. <laughs> um, the only thing they've really changed, they basically did the Mr. Beast approach. Um, the only thing they changed was that they turned, uh, they, it's like black ink packs blow up like you stole something from the department store. Yeah, they're wearing like squibs basically. Yeah. yeah for like uh, what would be a blood explosion in a Tarantino movie. Yeah, and um, it, it, and it's instead of blood, thank God they didn't make it red. But I feel like that was a fight. <laughs> oh, I feel yeah. like that had to have been a fight. But it's like, yeah, it's black. Um, and Trying to explain that to someone in like an executive feedback position that's saying like, um, I feel like, so my uncle hired me and I feel like we should have red blood like the show. Mm -hmm. And then the one human working on it going like, uh, well, yeah, but do you, this is I mean, obviously maybe I'm crazy, you know, it feels like then we're killing them. Mm -hmm. And it's like the visuals of a bunch of people in a, in the same uniform being murdered on mass. Mm -hmm. Like in the, but no, but, but that's what they did in the show. Right. Yeah. And I suppose that was for no reason. Uh, uh, my <laughs> uncle is like, he's really proud of me. So yeah, that's why he put me in this position. It's pretty fun. I think he's my uncle. We paid him to be, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So not only do, this isn't enough. The fact that they're wearing these squibs <laughs> that, that shoot like black uh, goo or whatever. Uh, because everyone refers to dying as being shot, mm -hmm. killed, dying, like that they they only refer to it as death. They do not, I don't think I heard them say get eliminated. <laughs> like it's possible that it happened. Well, they do it, if they ever say eliminated, it does have like mourning. <laughs> like they are like so low, like they're gone from their life, and, not from the game. And some people, and it's a bit of a shock uh, to have this thing like blow, explode on you. Some, I read something and it was from the producers uh, where they're like, they let people decide how much they wanted to lean into their elimination, mm -hmm. their death. And yeah, like I some people grab the chest and kind I of take flop. it with a grain of salt. But mm. some, some people, some people, die, they go, <clears throat> <laughs> and then, and then they, they lie there dead. Now, they, regardless, they all lie there as if they're dying. So then they keep doing these aerial drone shots of a bunch of people in the, the green, um, suits uh, lying dead on the ground. And then other- Not accounting for like maybe other imagery that that could invoke mm -hmm. and was supposed to reference. Uh-huh, that's my shit. And so <laughs> uh, another thing, some people though, uh, I I didn't grab it. I should have I should have picked out a couple of these, but some people um, don't like completely <laughs> lean into it and they go, uh. hmm. They die like Skyrim NPCs. They just kind of go loose. And yeah, like, or a guy's just like lying down and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is the funniest one. And like there's that guy that's prone. And because for some reason they put all the squibs based on their collarbone for some yeah, reason. Yeah, so it splashes it's up into their, their face. Fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> Initially I'm like, oh God, don't careful. Like, yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, that, I'm glad that Lee, I can absolutely see a world where they had to get they had to give pushback on. We should just use paintball guns. Um, like, no, oh no, no, dear, no, 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 I can imagine no, 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 no. that too. Okay, let's, outside of the fact that this exists and all the negative things we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna say one positive thing. The production design popped all the way off. It's this is one a, to one, yeah. a, this is an incredible achievement. It, well, the reason that I'm saying this is that like, people are just doing their jobs. People like are working in their dream careers. And this is a dream job for someone 
uh, in this type of in this type of field, and they they showed up, they delivered. Nine out of ten people involved in this production are not to blame in what is wrong with this. Production. I would say ninety nine out of a hundred. Yeah, but yeah, and uh, and so it's really just the fact that it exists because I think there's no way to thread the needle. And even the Mr. Beast video got uh, criticism. The, <laughs> The, it's like you look at the mist. I look at the Mr. V's video with fucking rose tinted glasses now, yeah. seeing seeing what this is. And, and at uh, least Mr. Beast has the balls to be a live critiquable person at the mm -hmm. like the avatar for the production of it, as opposed yeah. to how many anonymous you know animal mask wearing benefe benefactors get to make this show do a bunch of unethical shit, and you don't even know what their twitters are. You know what the value of a host is. Th it 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 is a person to like who is on your side like the yeah. hosts in these shows like even if uh I'll, I'll give a shout out to mark l Wahlberg as someone who did moment of truth where it's like whoa 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 you know and that was 20 years ago and then now seeing him on temptation island and he's so gentle and delicate and gives good advice to the contestants and then they all seem to like him mm -hmm. after the show you know, it's a I, I haven't seen a bad word said about him personally uh, and me watching the show. I'm like, great. Well done. Masterclass. And um, the absence of that makes everyone feel alone, because when you have someone there that is like you're seeing this right mm -hmm. or the, whatever, I just feel like it would bring the stakes down a lot. To an appropriate to level. To an appropriate level. Because I think they're raising the stakes because it's like, that's good, right? Mm -hmm. But it's like, I, I think it it over it overcooks it. And I think it has to be less faithful in order to not be so d almost disgusting. I mean, they prioritize fidelity to the detriment of the show. Mm -hmm. Like as as like like you said, production value, the set design, the costume design, everything's one to one. Really impressive. Yeah. It's even and this is actually very impressive for a, a reality show. It's even lit and graded right. Mm -hmm. Usually, it, if you watch like a live action anime, for example, or like an anime adaptation, you just notice how the costumes look wrong because the shading's there, but the lighting isn't. Everything looks right. Yeah. From but, a picture standpoint, you never see a reality show look this good. But. There is this distracting, the level of fidelity is, is, is so close and so accurate that it feels a more synthetic because I know that but not, not real. <laughs> like I know the Squid Game doesn't exist. So if you keep telling me it does, I don't, I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And there's no one, because there's no reaction outside of the contestants involved and there's so many names or it's numbers specifically, yeah. but there's never a protagonist. There's never a single person to follow. Granted, the host isn't competing, but to have Mark Wahlberg, to have him Someone walk through who's like, and be like, you mentioned before that your story was this, or like, what will you go home back to now? Just a, a wrap up, a conclusion, or something other than hundreds of people's confessionals, all in English In a disembodied too. voice. We, now, there are shows like um, Hot, uh, Too Hot to Handle where it is hosted by Siri or whatever the fuck. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and the counterpoint to the, the stuff that I'm mentioning with that, it's like, oh, you could say, well, Too Hot to Handle doesn't have a host. They're on a resort yeah. <laughs> and they're they're in beds. They're having the time of their lives. And there's Worst, not 456 of them. Well, yeah, there's not 456 <laughs> of them. And worst case scenario, uh, they got a cool vacation and story. This is worst case scenario, I got a story, but I was tortured also. Yes. Um, and at least the implicit value in uh, doing b smaller, kind of more glamorous reality shows like Too Hot to Handle or Love Island is that you can at least guarantee a big bump in social following and you can oh, leverage no, that. Oh, no way in hell that happens for this I don't even know what right? their names are. Yeah, you only see the names in the confessionals. They never say them out loud. It's just, it, all it happens is like, they're like, number 128, what's your background? And it just, the name pops up. It's like Cassidy, dental hygienist. And that's the can it you, forever. Uh, dude, I just realized there are going to be contestants on the show who put their number in their social media. Yeah. And that's, that's that almost feels like it's taking the dystopia out into the real world. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, oh God, referring to yourself as a number for any mm -hmm. reason. Yeah. Haunt, I mean, the, oh, whoops. The, uh, you, the final thing I'll say, I guess, about this set is like, I wanted to avoid using 
specific terms, but it's supposed to be, it's supposed to evoke prisoners of war. It's supposed to evoke concentration camps. That's why it mm. looks like this in Squid Game. And the fact that no one at the at a level of power, a level of control over the show was able to say, we're just not doing that. Yeah. We're taking that out. I know it's not what the same as the show. We're just going to remove it. We're going to give them colorful sheets or something, or we're going to give them little cabins. The, is a, it is scary that no one involved <laughs> made that connection and then made the connection of we shouldn't do that. It's like the profit motive went unchecked. They're like, oh, yeah. we bought, we, we own this license probably. They probably didn't have to do anything additional with the creator of Squid Game in order to do this. And we're gonna. Dan, go he probably found out about it coming out the same time as us. You. Uh, it also is a uniquely American show. Yeah. I, I don't. I do not think any of the creators of Square Game were involved. At least I didn't see them in the creators thing. Uh, I will say one more thing about this, which is, I've watched a lot of reality shows in my time. There is a trope going back to the you know the fucking real world premiere in the '90s on MTV, where everybody gets to the place. They get to oh, the yeah. resort whoa. and they're all, whoa, oh Yo, my God. Running up the stairs like, dude, there's dude, a jacuzzi. There's, there's a jacuzzi, dude, and there's a few. They do that same <laughs> shit. It's crazy. In this, <laughs> in this, where they're like, they go to the fucking, uh, they go to the bathrooms and like, I totally understand why they're so excited at first. And it happens over and over again in the beginning episodes because you walk in and you see something that you recognize from television. <laughs> yeah. And that is very exciting. It's like going to Universal. Yeah. You go, that's the, that's the thing. And then you realize you recognize it from the most depressing show <laughs> yeah. possible. Yeah. Oh my God, it's the basement from Parasite. Yeah. <laughs> and I live here now. Yeah. It's the guillotine. <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh my God. What, 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 what if I die? What if right, I, guys? Can you imagine? Um, <gasps> it's on fire. Woo! Yeah. Like the fire. And so them doing that for this <laughs> and then them doing it for, it feels like parody, dude. It feels like an SNL sketch where it's reality people. It's like a reality TV show at Squid Game. That's yeah. kind of what it feels like. Um, because there's no way in hell you're going to convince me the people are like stoked about 100, no, 400 bunk beds. Oh dude, literally, yeah, the sketch would be Mikey Day is the it only is, person I, oh, I also being Mikey like, Day. do do you guys not see how weird this is? And everybody else is like, yo, they've got the tall bunk bed, <gasps> a knife. And then, yeah, and then there's like, there's one of the guards holding a rifle and he goes, like, look, from and he's the like thing. poking him, like yeah. the fucking <laughs> Buckingham Palace guards. Yeah. Like, uh, guys, I don't know if we should be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would actually be pretty good. <laughs> too late. I mean, yeah. That I mean, would that, be too late. This is definitely too would, fucking late. Yeah, that would actually be kind of good. Um, that's a rare uh, hypothetical dub for SNL <laughs> these days. We'll take um, the cash. Oh yeah, do we have the? Do we find the bathrooms and stuff when they like walk in? I can shit in this. Oh hell yeah, bro! Oh. It's a little choppy. My recording got weird. Yo, let's go! Yo, oh my god! Squid you Game. This is awesome, dude. Guys, Squid Game. Go back. Go back. Jump. There's somebody jumping up and down. The wide, the drone, <laughs> like the super, the ceiling shot where someone in the back. Let's go. Up and down. <laughs> Squid Game. Yeah. Remember when they die? Oh, dude. Also, this is right after Red Light, Green Light. Like. In yeah. the fiction of this world, this is when 200 friends were killed or whatever. Yeah. And everyone's like, the bed. We got a bed. Do you remember when the guy, he's pretty good, he eats the little honey thing? So you actually, um, we jumped ahead past right, like green light. Let's jump back to uh, the sad woman that I keep setting up and we mm. haven't watched the clip yet. Who's not in debt? We're facing a recession. I mean, I had to, um, I'm not getting paid at work for this, but you're dreaming, you're taking a chance. What's that like to be able to pay off your car? I know these may be simple dreams, but what's that like? Yeah, I got my own dreams. They may not be much, but I got dreams too.
And then they cut to red light, green light. Can we jump forward to when she's eliminated? Oh my God. <laughs> There she goes. That was her. Was that her? I Already? believe she was literally the first person. Did she even? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Damn. so yeah. There you go. Okay. Barely even got like a glance. She got maybe three frames. She got three frames when she got. No conclusion. Just a sad lot. You know, I think one of the issues maybe that the show was doing is it's trying to like psych us out. Like, oh, well, we're following this person. You thought they'd be the one that survived. Mm -hmm. But it does it over and over again yeah. to the point where you know I'm on episode 3 now yeah. halfway through episode 3 and there's still no one I'm following no it, the only person you're following is the jock guy who that everyone hates yeah who uh, yeah his whole thing is like I'm uh, not better than anybody else, but I am rise and grind and I do work hard and it's all about not complaining. As soon as he yeah. said that, I thought to myself like, and why are you doing a game show? One of the why first you just work hard. One of the first things he said was only the strong survive. <laughs> And then he also said, um, no, no, no. He didn't say only, that's that's from a different episode. One of the first things he said is, I see everyone as money. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I'm like, is this guy even real? He alleged, he multiple times he's asked if he's for real in the show. And then he's like, no, this is just who I am. And I'm like, okay. Nice res respect. I mean, actually, he's a good reference point for the fact that uh, literally the first thing that jumped out to me as soon as I saw the red light, green light section is like, without the power of plot armor, Without a screenwriter making this, there's like, it's just going to be the most athletic person. Yeah. The reason the old man gets through is because he has to be in the story. Like, yeah. the reason all the characters that survive, because it's, I mean, first of all, this doesn't work because in uh, the actual Squid Game show, they don't know this is going to be happening. This is the reveal that it's a death show. Mm -hmm. When people start dying, they start panicking. People run. That makes more of them get shot. It's, you know, it's uh, like a show. It's like drama. It's, yeah. It's like entertainment, whatever that word is. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're like playing with our minds with images and but stuff that are fake. Without that, it's a bunch of people playing children's games, which is the thing we don't play anymore because we're adults and we have real games. <laughs> <laughs> and we can do stuff. Yeah. And I have Boulder Street <laughs> and I have Asterion. <laughs> <laughs> and frankly, I'm in love with Shadowheart and I don't need anyone else. Yeah. Uh, I, it is like a real genuine issue that there's all these people that's like, will she get through? Will they get through? I'm mean, like, I think the one that will get through is the one that runs really, really fast and is good at stopping when they're running first. Okay, so it's funny you mention that because there's also been backlash. There's also mm. been controversy about Squid Game. Can you imagine? So uh, one of those things is with this red light green light apparently they did this in like a uh an actual um airplane hangar it was like super cold they were wearing like two layers of oh, thermals yeah. the shooting day was supposed to be like um two hours we'll put uh the articles that we're we're referencing yeah, dude um a shoot day of two hours with that much equipment yeah it was supposed to be it went nine yeah. uh there's this girl who uh in the show she she stops she stops and she's squatting Right? Yeah, yeah. And she goes, why did I do this? Why did I squat? And then it cuts to her again, and she's like, I can't do it anymore. I give up. And it's like pretty immediate, and you're like, huh, that's odd. And um, uh, there were like 30 minutes between some of the breaks that they were taking to, to set shots, drone shots, blah, blah, blah. And then it's also alleged, this is either in the Rolling Stone article or um, one of the other articles, I read a few this morning, that I only read the Rolling Stone one, yeah. They cooked uh, some of the storylines. People mm. allege, speaking of the old man that made it through in the show, there is a uh, uh, mother-son group, and people have alleged in this article, and, and their names have been withheld for obvious reasons, that they saw um, the time run out, and then they put more time on the clock so that the mother could make it through. Sure. And that... I think the issue is really to the, the insult is to the players who were there. Be it's to the people that took time off work and didn't get paid for that time. For Didn't get paid for that time. And also, I don't know where and how they were communicated about the game elements. I'm sure they're super covered in contracts, Netflix is. But like, if you thought you were playing a fair game and then some shit like that goes down, uh, I, I would also be pissed. But from an entertainment standpoint, I'm like, that's how the cookie crumbles sure. 
in these situations. They also bring back dating show people who got eliminated from the game because in those things, the game doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's, not just a, it's only about being on the show. That's yeah, what it's about it being is. on the show. And so in this, when the game matters so much, but then there's not mu as much integrity to the game, it's hard to say. Now, uh, the producers, uh, and there's a, an article that was clearly like paid media that was like the producers talking to some sort of big outlet uh, before the show came out, they said there are some scripted elements to just um, to uh, uh, accent and sort of add color to the storylines that they're already trying to tell. Yeah. So that allow like with that statement that allows that sort of how big how how big is the um, the the scripted bits right? Like they say it's small. Some other people could allege it's large. Really, it's um, who's to like who can be an objective judge sure. of like that? So um, that's something definitely to keep in mind. I bet it's like th I bet they like cook it, and then they're like, "Well, this person probably isn't going to win because we know this thing is coming up anyway." So we want to make the story richer and make the storyline whatever. And so I don't think that the person who wins is not going to have worked done the work for sure, it, yeah. you know what I mean? But I do understand the backlash around um, the production and the conditions, especially like people were, uh, there's a uh, there's a quote in the, one of these articles where they say that during this nine hour shoot day for Red Light, Green Light, they had to have medics called out. And then people like, uh, this is almost like a thing that almost happens in the show where it's like, People were actually hurting in danger, like cold, whatever. They had to call medics. And when the medics came, the freezing conditions resulted in at least 10 people collapsing during the game, sources say, with medics being screamed for as people fell and convulsed on the ground. One alleges that medics took ages yeah. to reach the players because producers were worried about camera shots being ruined. As a solution, masked people in pink jumpsuits were sent out, the guards, uh, on the floor with black coffins and positioned themselves to block out the medics attending to a fallen player, all while the contestants remain frozen in place. That is insane. And all, like, all of that strictness about continuity for something that the way this is edited is fucking incomprehensible. You have no idea how many people are dying. You have, no, it is like, like, you know, not to focus too much on production when there's obviously more dramatic things going on. It, this is incompetent. Like the way it's shot, when they get out of red light, green light, and then they show that overhead shot, maybe 20 bodies, and then they go back to the room and they're like, 2,000 people. <laughs> we actually, half the cast is gone. I'm like, brother, you're, the reason you're making people freeze to death is because you're trying to make a really comprehensive edit. Well, yeah. This is a joke. I cannot tell where anybody is. The geography of the scene makes no sense. I don't know who anybody is, so it doesn't matter. I understand how this happens in, well, th that's the thing. It's, they're not really, doing the game as it's advertised. But so, they're punishing them as if they were. But they're punishing them. Yeah, and so, because I understand how it gets to that point. You're like, okay, all these people got eliminated. There's all this time on the clock. We need to communicate people getting eliminated at certain times. But I guarantee you when it says like, 10 seconds on the, cause it's edited like a regular squid game. <laughs> like, yeah. like where it's like, uh, there's suspension of disbelief, but you know that when it says there's one minute left on the clock and then it goes boom, 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 three people are eliminated. Those people were not eliminated at that time. Yeah. In addition to articles being written about some of the stuff that's going on with the, the production of this show, some of the cast members have taken to TikTok, assuming, uh, I would assume they're breaking some sort of NDA by doing oh, yeah. this, but uh, for our benefit, We had the game had to have been at least nine hours. It had to have been. Well, wow. and remember, it was below freezing. We were my the my my feet were numb. My hands were blue. Constant snot dripping from my nose. 
constantly, just shivering the whole time. I have never been that cold that long in my life. And everybody was. If you look at scenes um, on the show, you'll see people that still had their, because then before the game started, they gave us hand warmers and they gave us foot warmers. When the game started, they told us that we had to give them back the hand warmers and foot warmers. And we could not zip our, we had to unzip our jackets. But you can see people, um, if you look closely, you can see that people still had hand warmers in their hands. And you can see that pretty much everybody had their hands in their jacket pocket. And um, the mother at the end, even when she's hugging her son, she still had her hands in her pocket. That's telling you how cold it was. When you see people jumping, as you see people doing this in the game, they weren't doing that because they were nervous. They were doing that because it was so doggone cold that they had, had to do whatever they could to, um, to warm up. It was, it was ridiculous. Okay. Well, they're so psyched to get to the jail cell. Can I just say that uh, the comments on this pissed me off? Oh, really? Like someone said, um, did y'all watch Squid Game first? Or, And then they said, I mean, you get what you signed up for, a big paycheck. And also the show it's based off is insane, LOL. Wow, 20,000 likes on that deranged comment. Yeah, that's what is making me mad. Four million dollar cash prize. That's all I'm saying. That does not. It's a game show, dude. Do you it think mean, they got the prize? <laughs> yeah, dude. Not everyone gets the prize. You should not be. Okay, just buy a lottery ticket then. It's for entertainment. It's like supposed to be a sh like a, a fun reality show. It's supposed to be a fun experience. You're what not. A, what about both? Yeah. What about they do the show and they don't give people hypothermia? Yeah. Do, are they, they're allowed to do that because Squid it, Game's crazy? In the real show, people die. It's like, yeah. yeah, I mean, did you watch the show? Yeah, I'm like, well, I, yeah, with a suspension of disbelief. Do you think people died on set of the show? Oh, my God. Do you, do you think the stars of Squid Game died? Uh, th those people are fucking wrong. And it's so inhumane. And just, like, think, have, a like, a shred of empathy for a fucking second as you're writing your TikTok comment. I mean, it's people... I, I, Again, like unable to reconcile the fact that they liked something that they can't morally agree with. Yeah. And instead of just being like, ah, oh, compartmentalize those two things, fucked up how they made that, but also I can watch the show and be like, oh, kind of kind of strange. Instead, they have to be these fucking top tier moral arbiters, yeah. heroes, protagonists of Earth are the main characters, and you can't have watched something that was bad. Yeah. It can't be bad that I order stuff from Amazon because I do it. So uh, actually, you're wrong to say that they had to. When in bottles. reality, it's like but things can be true. It's like ordering from Amazon can be bad, and also people uh, do it. I do it. I do. <laughs> what are the replies to the person who said, "I mean, you get what you signed up for," but which is an oh, yeah. insane, insane fucking thing to say. Please be like a human being. A big paycheck. Oh, she replied. Grandma gone wild. Replied. She said, "A big paycheck. Did mine get lost in the mail? Please, someone help me find it." Huh. Damn. The winner gets a big paycheck, so it's not going to be an easy competition. What do you think her criticism was? Yeah. You signed up to try and anything other than almost torture is insane. It's ch Mr. Okay. Was Mr. Beast torture? I don't think we heard anything about that. I don't know. I'm not excusing Mr. Beast, but I'm just saying, like, you can make something uh, uh, derivative of Squid Game without it being torture. It's just not what. Be, this is running a show incompetently. They're putting too much faith in Netflix as, like, a, yeah, it turned out to be a nine yeah. hour shoot. And like, no. The people that made the show are not very good at their jobs, or like the people that orchestrated the show at a very high level are not very good at their jobs, yeah. and they don't care. So what happened was a bunch of people had to suffer. That's not why the show exists. Yeah, exactly. That happened as well as the show existed. If, if that was a the thing, they would, they would have played that up. There would be entertainment value yeah. to the fact that- They wouldn't hide it. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't hide it. They wouldn't bring out guys with black coffins to hide the medics. They, yeah, they secretly, they secretly tortured them just so that everybody inside of the show was uh, being tortured, even though they didn't cool. show it on camera. That's like uh, the people that are like, like Shelley Duvall famously on the set of uh, The Shining was just tortured the entire time. Like she just abused and had yelled at constantly by Kubrick. He's just like a big piece of shit. Mm -hmm. like, you know, always has, always was by all accounts. And then people that like The Shining, people that just love Kubrick have to push back and be like, it was for the art. You can like The Shining and condemn abuse. It, yeah. You don't have to do it. What the issue was is that uh, Stanley Kubrick was a crazy person who couldn't communicate. Yeah. So the only way he thought he could make movies, but like if uh, Tarantino was like, I'm, I'm, I'm making Pulp Fiction, I'm gonna shoot John Travolta. So it looks <laughs> like he dies. 
No, yeah. just put it back on. No, just let them like zip their jackets up. But no, that's just the give thing. Them People have this thing in their head where it's like you have to suffer for the art, and I think that that is wrong. No. I think it's wrong. Um, It's just a cooler narrative. Plenty of people make art and live charmed lives and don't Mm. suffer at all. And many people suffer and do not turn that suffering into art. Way more of them, actually. Way more of them. Most of them. Because they're suffering and don't have time to make it into art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And just because someone who can make good art is maybe doesn't have other skills, uh, interpersonal skills, this is often the case, Mm -hmm. um, doesn't, doesn't invalidate the art. Within reason. <laughs> sure, <yeah. laughs> um, and doesn't grant them a license to do bad shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't and Netflix is like, I'm sure there's also people just like, look, Netflix is a pretty big organization. I think they know what they're doing. Yeah. No. No. They, but the fact that they're so big and successful is why they don't know what they're doing some of the time. Uh, so one of the viral clips going around about this show is of one of the contestants who is particularly... Mm, anxious anxious like they were going through it uh yeah do, there's plenty of words for it and we're not criticizing them definitely, no actually but they yeah. are they're um, emotionally volatile in this moment in this moment and not in a bad way or harmful to other people they are no, no no just like they're you know this is just like how it's presented in the show um they're like about to go up to do they're doing the the cookie thing or the honeycomb thing uh, where they have to cut the shapes out. A thing that makes no sense as a game in America where that isn't a thing. And they don't give... Uh, is it, it's called like Dalgona or something yeah. like that. They don't give um, context for this either. No. Just Imagine squid having game. not seen Squid Game. Squid, squid Game is the context. So, um, yeah, they've got to cut, you know, um, shapes out of a honeycomb. There's like a circle. There's a triangle. Is there a square? Uh, no, a triangle. Single triangle, a, a star. star. Star, yeah, star and then umbrella. And umbrella is the really hard one. And a uh, funny thing happens where twice, so they, they get into lines and then there's a, a delegate from each line. There's four lines and they need to basically secure a shape for their line. But the those four people all have to agree on what shape they're going to get and no one wants umbrella so the first time they go up there's four people and everyone selects a shape and the guy who's supposed to get umbrella is like i don't want to do that and then they agreed and then one of them sprinted over and took star which he was supposed to have oh right right so they broke the rules and then they got a little smirk on their face like i just pulled the wool over his eyes and then he's like no this isn't what we agreed and then uh, he's like, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to switch it. And they're like, no, you've got to, you've got to pick umbrella. And he's like, no. And then, and then they all get eliminated. <laughs> it was, it's so sick. It's actually maybe one of my favorite parts. Cause it's just like the game plan did not work. That game. I would say the most entertaining, like actual game so far, not in the show squid game. Mm. It's great. It's perfectly designed for reality TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they it's, what, five minutes of the episode? And then they just go into this boring, nasty section. Right. And so, um, and so then, so then another group of four, a delegate from each of the four lines goes up. Uh, essentially, the same thing happens where so the person who is gonna, is left with Umbrella, does not want to take Umbrella. Uh, is that be- the one where they did a race? They did a race, which yeah. is stupid. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then once again, they cannot come to a agreement and then so they, awesome. and then they lose, which is so funny because the second time it happens, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah, I know. It's really cool. And, 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 uh, the person's like, I'm bringing you all down with me. And then no one else wanted to, I guess the social pressure of having to be the person who takes umbrella. And so then the next person in line cut to Spencer number 299 already hyperventilating at the front of the line, already like red in the face. And this is not like an exaggeration. This is just like what is shown on screen. He looks away where a more competent show would probably at least take him to the back of the line, maybe bring along a medic, see if there's, he's having a severe panic attack yeah, of some the kind. Producers can intervene at any point. They're doing whatever the fuck anyway. The producers yeah, are. They have, it's not, clearly have they agency. They can break their own they... rules. There's no, <laughs> like the, uh, it is not an, I, like, I, I'm just gonna use Ironclad. <laughs> This is not an ironclad production where we 
we're watching every minute of everything. The producers intervene all the time. There's nothing stopping them from saying, hey, someone else take this person's place. They're not in a position right now to do this. The only thing stopping them is, is them thinking. In it, they go, ooh, mm, entertainment, drama. ooh, drama. And so uh, Spencer goes into this room. He's essentially, he kind of, then we go into a background about Spencer, how he's like, meek, mild-mannered, anxious, uh, uh, is questioning his faith, wants to provide for his family, happens to be a software engineer, shout out. Um, and then he's like, he makes a bad play, which is to say, hey, I'll take Umbrella if uh, you guys help help each other or something like that. Like he's like, says spit in the cups. Yeah, which, which we should say, I honestly almost wanted a trigger warning up at the beginning of the episode of um uh, watch out for this timestamp nasty really yeah. gross well, so we'll get to that we'll yeah. get to that but before we get into that the um he basically is saying help your fellow man at least that's how i that's how yeah. i understood it and he was trying to be like noble about it and i'm not there, quite sure what he meant i don't know what he meant I, <laughs> like it seemed like he was like yeah help your fellow man but the issue is in my mind no way in hell they're gonna let you help I, each other i think it was a bit of a cope for he kind of just got alpha dogged yeah he did get alpha dogged by 432 the big alpha dog himself he just had to be like yeah I'll, you know actually i'm willing to do that there's a point too where he talks about how he doesn't stand up for himself and then there's a, <laughs> a clip of him trying to talk to people he goes no shut up and you're like hey he was trying to stand up for himself i want to give my man spencer some credit but anyway uh reality sets in he chooses umbrella uh and then all the panic sets back in he now oh it, if you, sorry i just realized i guess for people who don't know it's basically it's a little caramel the game is it's a little caramel treat the harder the shape is the harder it is to cut out if you break yes. the caramel you you air quotes die that's yeah. the thing and um and so uh he then Ha he picks Umbrella for his team. He has to now face his team. <laughs> then everyone's ridiculing him, walking yeah. in going, he won't even look us in the eyes. He's like, this guy <laughs> failed us. And they go last. So he, for the most of the game, he just has to stand there. Yeah, and then this dude, uh, this clip goes viral. So all that context is for when he's doing his, um, he's doing his Umbrella, he's getting close to the end. And he makes a fatal flaw. He is holding this in his hand and pushing into it. Crazy. It is, I saw him break this. I was, I go, what are you doing? What was the plan? You were, what was the plan? You were going to fail with the strategy. This is like, um, I don't know why I know that that's going to not work, but maybe it's just like the basics of like lever dynamics and yeah. like, like you are creating, uh, the fulcrum is your finger. You're pushing, you were literally creating a, a break. You're the, going to break. And you're you're putting pressure on the broadest part, specifically with an umbrella. You're putting pressure on the broadest part of the shape and pulling at the thinnest, most brittle part of the shape. No one succeeded with the strategy. People left it on the in the little tin and they scratched it in the tin. I don't know why he didn't do that. They have a yeah, they have a pin. They That's have a needle. No, they, they have equipment. It's yeah, not yeah, like they you have, a have to needle thing. Up. Uh, yeah, so I don't know what his strategy was, but none of that is a side. It's like, I have to say, just as a fan of games, I was like, buddy. But his reaction is what goes viral. His reaction, he will play it, though I do want to give a trigger warning because like, this is like the type of thing that I feel like the show should have given a trigger warning. For. Yeah, uh, I, I, I should say, yeah, I, I have myself have not experienced a panic attack, but I think it could at least seem like that to people if that's a yeah i mean you, it's you're like this what you were going to see on screen is him like sort of holding back you know uh holding back his stomach and uh hyperventilating he's red in the face mm. he's shaking like it's pretty extreme and then you, you know netflix is uh netflix whose twitter bio is currently Ugh. can you scroll to the side oh yeah this is relevant yeah, Netflix, whose Twitter bio is currently Leanne from Squid Game Challenge, please be my mom. Oh. Leanne is the mom. It's all it's all in lowercase. Netflix is so personable. They're so personable. They're such a human. I'm going to defend them in the comments and say it was actually only five hours. They tweeted, 299 had one of the most dramatic reality show exits of all time. And this is the exit. Again, uh, we'll put a timestamp. 
Um, it's a 37 second clip though. So about 40 seconds from now, jump a minute ahead to not watch this. They say they're games, <laughs> but they're not. Play 299. Eliminated. I mean, that kind of has everything. That kind of has everything from the show. It's very hard to watch. And um, I mean, honestly, this is the part is the part that feels closest to Squid Game. Yeah, that was legitimately sad and painful. The uh, the reason, though, that we went all through this rigmarole of giving this person's backstory and all this stuff is that two things. Uh, one, we have a TikTok from Spencer talking about his experience. And then two, there's something that he might include that was like left out. But if not, I'll fill I'll fill it in as well. So let's oh. just watch his TikTok first. We all respond to stress differently, whether because of our genetics, the way we're raised, or our current circumstance. I've had a little bit of a history of anxiety. Uh, I didn't expect to have anything weird happen when I got on the show, but then in a, I was put in a position where I needed to make a choice for myself and for dozens of other people that would affect whether or not they receive millions of dollars. <laughs> in that situation, I responded in a weird way. Um, I started gagging. So I was not acting. No, I do not deserve an Oscar. Um, and yes, it was all embarrassing and real. <laughs> I'm glad he, clearly he's been able to leverage this into a kind of a social. I, I actually too. like. I maybe the only silver lining here is that he's able to leverage this, and people can see that he's like a real person with real yeah. emotions and a real story to tell. And one of the elements of that story, and this is something that I do believe he's talked about, and we will definitely need to, need to source this before I just throw this out there. But uh, he's a cancer survivor. Really. And that, like, I don't think that fit their, like, everybody picking on him narrative. Oh, And yeah. so they just, like, left it out. Which, I mean, yeah, I'd say in most circumstances, that's the kind of story they would use for dramatic effect. Mm -hmm. but, not like if, but not if uh, he, fucks it, he fucks it up for He's everybody. He's the nerd. He's that's the his bad thing. nerd. And he can't. You know, let's beat him up. Don't ask him questions about his life. Ah, he's anxious. Let's kick him. Yeah, you know, like, loser. Um, Jacob, can this. you Google Spencer Squid Game Cancer to make sure that we don't? Yeah. Okay. So in this Deadline article titled "Squid Game: The Challenge Player Spencer," nope, never mind. Don't need to read the title. In this Deadline article, I, I read it. I was like, Sp "What is the title of this article?" I'm sorry. Oh. All right, don't need to read it, but I was curious. Thank you for humoring me. It's funny they call it a cookie competition. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so in this Deadline article, Spencer says, I wasn't a diehard fan. The biggest reason I signed up for the show was a few years ago, I recovered from cancer. And with that, I became much more intentional about the things I wanted in my life, meaning deep human connections and unique experiences. And I think that's very respectable and something that we should have known about Spencer. Like, I think that's a failure of the production. And that's also a... Part of his story that is like admirable, regardless of how the show resolves. And I guess they just didn't want anything like <laughs> fulfilling about this. They only wanted suffering. It can't be like part of someone's journey up. This and is with exactly a, with a host. Maybe you even resolve that and you go like, yeah, well, did you get anything out of the experience for what it was? You know? Yes. Instead, it's like, no, he died. Goodbye. He, they they decided, and this is just how reality TV um, can sort of not show the full picture uh, to, for the sake of a narrative, which is always doing one hundred percent of the time, no matter the slightest the slightest amount of um, uh, obscuring information or um, like omission. He is a strong person. He is. Yeah. He has gone through adversity. He has, you know, like he, you know, he is like someone who I think people could like see the humanity in and and uh, look up to even and you know like relate to, but he is only portrayed for this tr this trope. He's the yeah. anxious anxious guy, which is kind of I think maybe one of the things that's 
the producers and I know we just have to keep using it in abstract terms because we you know Netflix benefits from the fact that nobody knows who's doing anything that's like part of their gambit they I, underpay people because nobody knows who is involved in projects and blah 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 I also hope I'm not infantilizing him or anything by saying like oh he's has you know something because he went through this experience oh no but i mean he i highlighted it himself yeah he highlighted himself yeah that's right sorry i, I just you know no very much second so. guessing myself i yeah. no that's respectful I, I think that's right he if this show i mean obviously they don't understand squid game but let's take away just like the the themes of capital in squid game that's its own thing mm -hmm. it's the main theme but they've already ignored that so i guess we'll just, we'll just drop that yeah uh one of the things about squid game is that like it's weird to call it levity because it's still in a death game, but there it is full. The main protagonist especially is like a very achingly sincere person. Right. And that's what anchors a show that's literally the entire rest of the cast are very, very cynical, very intense. The main character of the original Squid Game is the one that figures out you need to lick the little candy to loosen it up because he's, you know, in touch with his inner child. He's a weird little guy, whatever. I feel like they, this is so much more hateful like yeah in compared to a show about people being killed this is so much more like mocking it's laughing at and like look this guy everybody everybody's making fun of him and he died the only Ugh. person who is given a redeeming story thus far is uh is Leanne the mom and they're doing yeah. this on purpose but she is also the only person who feels like they should be on this game because she's like Hey, I'm getting up there in years. I want to prove to myself that I can do this. And that is the amount of stakes that I think we as an audience should be comfortable with yeah. in a game like this. Whereas like, I don't want it to be like, you're hijacking the empathy of the audience by being like, this is Joe. He needs this to save the house. <laughs> now watch him run. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. That doesn't. Oh, he tripped. Bye. Oh, and bye. Oh, sorry. Oh, now you get to be sad. Wah, you get wah. to be sad. Keep watching. <laughs> Are you still watching? Do you remember I like green light? Squid, mm -hmm. squid game? <laughs> Anyone? Um, Roblox? But yeah, I kind of think when, when I was watching it, uh, I was watching it over Zoom with Anastasia while we were taking notes. And I was like, I don't think I could have watched this if it weren't for this show. Because oh, yeah. if I didn't have a place to sort of get all these thoughts out, then it uh, would be one thing. Oh, Ooh. special delivery, by the way. Oh. I, I called this one in. Oh. I called this one in. Let's go. We got the. This is go. two podcasts. This is two pods in a row. <laughs> we had uh, the the croissant delivery. Thank you, BB. Yes, you can. Two two in a row that have been betrayed by a, a good friend. Uh, uh, Jordan's been betrayed by Phils twice in a row. It's okay. Nothing personal. We still love you, Phils. Oh, oh you saying you I probably saying, would not have. Watched I would not. Show. Yeah, I do think that now that we've. We've now recorded a n close to three hour episode of the show. I do feel like I will continue to watch the show because I think it's only got one more batch of episodes left. Yeah. And then we'll, I think we can just report back and see if it redeems itself, though I do not think it's in a redeemable state. No. I mean, the show, as I said, you know, we said at the beginning, its foundations are wrong. Yes. The show would have to be rebuilt, which obviously it wouldn't be. But there's like, I think there's just a fundamental issue with the way that the games work, mm -hmm. what the games are supposed to do in the original show. Right. The games are like deceptively simple in the original show because most of the drama is figuring out what are they going to be? How do I prepare? How do I figure it out? In this show, all the puzzles are solved. <laughs> all the techniques are solved. All the drama is sat from it. Maybe do all of that if you're going to lean into the characters. Oh, no, that's not a thing either. <laughs> we don't care about them okay, either. Okay, not all the games are solved because uh, they introduced Battleship <laughs> into a Squid Game, <laughs> and they didn't do that in their regular games. That's true. It's almost like an even less skilled game. It is. It was like remarkable. It felt like a, <laughs> something Mr. Beast would do. <laughs> like, it like didn't fit. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, honestly, I think the solution to didn't the show... Didn't Mr. Beast play Battleship? He played human battleship in it. Yeah, video. I believe so, dude. But uh, he's, you know, who's... not that I, I again, not, uh, not Mr. Beast defenders here. It's more uh, he made the Squid Game thing, and so that's why he's coming up. I think I think it's very noticeable that he also with like a, a a penny on the budget of this show. Well, yeah, also made it and also made it interesting. Yeah, with, I mean, like you said, 
he just had a host. There's one hat. Yeah. He lent into like interesting people as opposed to tragic figures. Not that tragic figures shouldn't have a chance here, but like. In this sort of thing, it feels like tragedy porn. It feels like it's only the tragedy and no other element. Honestly, you could fix all of this for me to some to some respect by paying all of them. Oh, brother, you Son? are bringing it home. No, that's not how that works. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm not a math guy. I don't know. Uh, I want to see a version of the show where everyone gets ten thousand dollars and they still play the games for fun. It is so affordable. Make because the cast they smaller. Have the money. <laughs> I don't care. Make the at least cover what living expenses would be while they're on the show. Yeah, yeah. Give them two thousand. People are having to like take off work, so the opportunity cost. That's the crazy thing too. The I don't know what if they had a per diem, but it seemed like, and per diem is a thing like a daily stipend or whatever that you get to live. But, uh, but they don't. They give them a can of food, so they. They give them a food. can of food. I was. All, I also wrote down. Um, man, imagine if there were chefs who were trying really hard on the food that they keep shitting on, and they were like, "Oh fuck, they didn't like it." <laughs> no, but they probably made the food bad because it's Squid Game or whatever. Um, but yeah, they could totally have afforded to give a participation fee. Mr. Beast did this. Mm. Oh fuck, Mr. Beast. God damn it! I'm tired of talking about Mr. Beast, but. He did do the thing where he's just like, you can leave, you can take, take the money. Yeah. And then immediately he was like, a hundred people are gone, or ten people are gone, or whatever the fuck. It wasn't a hundred people. I don't think he spent that kind of money, but it was a thing where he was like, hey, if if guaranteed ten grand is worth it to you, take it. That would that is life changing money for so if many you, people. Yeah, that is that pays off uh, many cars. It pays off many medical debts. It covers rent while you say seek a new job. Like it, it yeah. It's like it's just so like I mean that, that I that I do think is partly the result of like hey I think you know we we said our thoughts on Jimmy here and there. I have nothing against Jimmy, you know whatever. Yeah. It, I do think that was a conscious decision on his part. He's a lot more conscientious about that kind of stuff and respect for that. Well, due but, to criticism, but, you know, yeah, in yeah, part, yeah, not in part like due to criticism from know. people, valid criticism. But he is also the face of the production and has to act with a little bit of tact but the anonymous uh the, the, you know benefactors behind this project they can do literally whatever they want because nobody is going to tweet at the executive board of netflix nothing about this show changes if you take the cute little four five six the 4.56 million dollars and you change that to one million dollars and you take the other 3.56 million dollars <laughs> and you at least offer some sort of parachute for the opportunity cost that people are spending on the game. Because I think it riles up the emotions and stuff to an unhealthy degree. And they don't get to benefit. Not that people should all, or sorry, not that like, I get it's a game, you know, participation trophy, soy boy, whatever. Like, I, I, I don't know. It just, if these, if you, okay. I think that if you are sourcing people that, all when they're telling their stories it's all financial needs oh they screened for people in desperate situations yeah. if you're doing that then you should there should have been a uh uh some sort of baseline you know you get something or or you get the opportunity because giving the opportunity means it's a part of the game you get to you get uh you get to um decide to stop like this happens in game shows all the time do you want to stay where you're at or do you want to keep playing do you want to be a millionaire and then they go <laughs> uh i don't i don't do i want to and then you like look in the crowd should i keep playing everybody's like, yeah. and then someone can go for me guaranteed money i need it i'm gonna i'm gonna take it peace out guys and maybe a little bit of interpersonal drama when their friend is staying but they're going and yeah oh, what's, which by, by the way um, they don't get money out of it, but that does happen in the show. Yeah. There is a moment where they're given the opportunity to go home. Yeah. And who will or won't or who will and won't come back is a really compelling part of the drama. Yeah. But they don't care about characters. So what? Yeah. So know? it's just, and I, this isn't, I'm not trying to turn it into charity. I'm saying a reallocation of resources would probably make for a better show. Re, reallocation of the existing resources within. 
And that is can... us being cynical about it. Like, yeah. if you just want to think about the numbers. Also, hey, one successful class action lawsuit, you've lost a lot more fucking money than that. Yeah, and it sounds like you might have one on your hands. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly, and also we're not lawyers, and uh, who no. knows what's going to happen. I wouldn't be, I'm not going to be involved. I wasn't on the show. I'm just, well, I'm kind of a lawyer. Yeah. Cynically, cynically, you'd pay some of this money to avoid the bad press. Yeah. But maybe also cynically, the show is doing gangbusters. I mean, what does anyway. the bad press do? Yeah, yeah. If you don't care. Yeah. If no one cares. God, it is like a, it is like the perfect counter to everything. It's like, it's like you, know, you could avoid money, all this. Don't care. Yeah. The cruelty. You could have been less cruel. And they're like, to what? And what do I get? And what do I it? get? Yeah. yeah. There's not anything bad that happens to me. From Would it that. cost more money? No. It costs there should be amount. consequences oh. to 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 uh, harming people. Yeah. Can I just say? Um, when you say it's a two hour shoot and it's a nine hour shoot, something should happen. Something should happen. <laughs> when people freeze, that I should be a I understand that it's in the contract or whatever, but still that feels like a moral failing. Dude, this is the, I mean, this is Americans coping with healthcare kind of stuff. I hear still yeah. a lot, which is like, yeah, well, that's what your deductible is. It said it. I'm like, sorry, I'm, I am a lot of the earth are from places where you just get the healthcare and it's like obscene that you would have to pay for it. Oh, it's like that girl who, or that, that young woman who was like fresh out of, like in her first job. Yeah. And, yeah. and she was like, hey, I like my job. Um, everything's great. I commute so much that I don't have time to live my life. And then the response was like, Welcome to the real world, ma'am. You, you gotta get with the program. I went through this, mm -hmm. so you have to go through it. That's how it and works. And it's like when you went through it, a house was a nickel and everyone got <laughs> one for free. And even if it wasn't, why do you want someone to suffer for no reason? For no reason. It Makes doesn't sense. take away from you. Your grandfather was in World War II. Do yeah. you think you should have been in World War II? Yeah, that's the thing. But every the response to that was not this girl saying, uh, actually, I'm enjoying my job. I'm I'm working hard. I'm like all of it was like they're complaining. She wasn't complaining. She was just saying I'm spending too many hours commuting. It's making me sad, and it's making me sad. And I don't have time for hobbies. That is valid, yeah. and that is like yeah. and not. Well, hold on. Like also, like not everyone does go through that. Mm -mm. Got, we've had shitty jobs. We've had great jobs. Whatever. My commute has never been that long. No, I've had walking commute at one point. I had some. Decent bus commutes, but never longer than thirty minutes or so. It is different. That's that's hey, not the universal what? experience. I had a privilege of being paid a wage where I could afford to live uh, close enough to work. Yes. The issue is that oftentimes these wages are not. Uh, congruent with the place that the work is, so you can't get in the fucking uh, Attack on Titan Wall Maria of, <laughs> yeah. of the property rates <laughs> like rising. You know what I mean? And you're burning cash on like just trying to live a living. Yeah, like, yeah. Because you're oh, not just on travel. I mean, some places have affordable public transport, but even then, the way you have to re-engineer your life around that. The amount that you may have to just end up spending on food while you're on the way or back from work like that's when you have dinner and then you go to bed and go to sleep while you're also you know probably if you're doing your first big job you're probably in your first big apartment or like some mm -hmm, big, recent mm -hmm. move it's just or sad. nowadays you're at home because yeah, it's right. the if you can be you know if you didn't have to relocate for work that's my boomer uh uh, instinct that I think I had to challenge, uh, especially around COVID, yeah. was, uh, well, yeah, yeah, you should you should move out, get some experience with the real world. And like, well, yeah, but I went to college and that's why I could do that. And then I went to a Patreon and that's why I could do that. There was no skill that I had that made that, I didn't work harder to make that viable. It was just fortunate. Could have been a job I was good at and that lo I love that didn't give me that opportunity. Didn't even have houses close enough to walk. Yeah. I mean, I've still never had a car. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, because I've never had to have a car for work. I Uber here when we record the show. Yeah. And then I don't go anywhere for a week. And I don't commute. I live here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This you, is my real house. It's you're not living in your house a lot. We, we, uh, uh, that's the funny thing is like, I, I do think there's like benefits and this is a topic for another show because we have to wrap this up. It's we the, our timer says three hours and six minutes. You little freaks um, get all this content. <laughs> but yeah, like I um I always think it's funny when they make sets that look like places. And I'm like, no, this is I live here. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually a real place. 
Um, that's why. That's why I was worried about the address on the bag because it could be the real one. Yeah. All right. We did it. We end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. We love you, and we're sorry. We have to go record the Patreon episode. <laughs> uh, we're gonna go talk about the our our embarrassing Spotify Wrapped mm. on patreoncom sadboys. So go check that out. If you are so inclined, it's five dollars, but you don't need it. It's you know discretionary entertainment spending. Let's go back and forth. Just guess an artist that the other person has. All right, so I've got my number five ready. Me? Oh, hit me with a clue. Um, it's an awfully hot uh, coffee pot. Machine Gun Kelly's friend <laughs> Eminem. <laughs> yeah, for some reason Eminem is my number five. I do not know why. <laughs> oh, 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 JID. Yep, number four. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving, girl? Moving girl, how's your day looking? That future girl. Future girl, yeah, we are now. Take my money, go away, are you want it? Gay too rich for me.